Star Sailor, and Poor Misguided Fool. With me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkington. The K-Man, round of applause for K-Man. Yeah. Uh, but no one's uh, announced who you are. Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais. It's XFM 104.9. Saturday afternoon. If you didn't know that, <laughs> I don't know why I mentioned it. That was stupid, really. You must know that by now. Well, we've got some great things coming up. We have indeed. We? We've got songs and chat and things. We'll also, of course, be um, running through the white van man questions from the sun again, but this time Carl will be answering them. I look forward to that. Yeah. Can we do that fairly soon? Oh. there's some good questions this week. Yeah, um, we will, but um, as I was coming in, there was like a bunch of... Um, Posh lads, I think university students, trying to get in because they're doing one of those um, uh, scavenger hunts that they have to get points for charity and do stuff. And one of theirs is get on a live radio show. Right. So I sort of, sort of felt sorry for them. So I've inv- I said they could come on here just for five minutes. Who are so they? And right. um, they're just. Um, are they toffs? They are sort of like toffs, but they're trendy toffs. That's uh, obviously trendy toffs. I don't know yeah. what's that. Is that like L- Lady Victoria <laughs> Hervey? Is she a no, don't let me that. No, they they're both sort of like that. Um, Will of Pop Idol. Right, right, right. They're like, right, they're like right. him, sort of like trendy but posh. Okay. They seem nice enough and they're doing it, they're doing it for a uh, cancer charity and um, uh, they just get. They they've get got, for what is it like they got their sponsor to do very Exactly, I don't know quite how it works, but they're going to they're gonna come on and. Because um, we get. The, for coming on this live radio show, they get 17,000 points. Right, good. If I can put that in context, yep. if they were to say, did it help deliver a baby? They only get seven thousand two hundred and fifty points, well, but it's much easier. <laughs> it is. There's yeah. lot. There's lots of women just happily dropping sprogs posh all posh. over the place. You can't get on a live radio show exactly. these days for exactly. love nor money. That's true enough. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, when are they coming in? Uh, uh Carl what, said they're going to just one thirty. I had a word with them. Okay. What and, did you make um, of them? They are posh. Really. But um, they said they're going to wander about and go and see if they can deliver a baby and that, and then come back here for one thirty, and. Uh, I don't know if it can, I'll, I'll I hope they points. don't like leave a be- baby sort of half out, you know, if they've got, they've got it, you know, they push, 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 sorry, we're going to have to shoot off, we've got to yeah. go and see we've got to play an instrument in a marching band <laughs> for 8,500 <laughs> points. Well, I did say be here definitely at 1.30, because I don't want you getting in the way of the white van questions. Oh, sure. the other thing sure. is, right, they get 7,500 uh, points for delivering a baby, but they get... 9,000 points if they cut Peter Stringfellow's hair. Well, he's, you know, he's, he's very precious about his hair. It's a more delicate operation, <laughs> isn't it? There's more that can go wrong. That's true enough. Take an unconventional animal for a walk in a park. What an is an unconventional, unconventional animal? I think that could be a dog that just doesn't play by the rules. Yeah, that's a dog that's into Slipknot. <laughs> yeah, that, he's, that, that he wees in a urinal. Yeah, exactly. Standing up. Exactly. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward well, to yeah, that. I'm sure they're lovely guys. Good luck to them. Yeah, we'll see you later. Nirvana, Man Who Sold the World. Carl's all confused because it didn't tell you it was ended, did it? What is that then? Is that a sort of glitch in the computer? Just applause, isn't it? Okay, they it. might start swearing. You know what they're like. Yeah. Rock, star- <laughs> rock stars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Their blue language. Yeah, and all their uh, habits and oh. all that. Yeah, I like it says track ending now. So Stop late, talking about no, like it. That's in, that's, that you're giving away all the secrets of radio and that. People think it's like an old piece of vinyl that we've put on a needle, you know, like those old bits of footage of Tony Blackburn. That's what they think it's like. They don't realise there's computers doing it all. Yeah. Rick, you're, you're showing them behind the curtain. Never do that. I won't. I Never won't. do that, mate. Um, in the week, uh, I called Carl up. I said, how are you, mate? You went not too bad. Uh, now, as you know, his girlfriend's been away for um, ages, hasn't she? Covering yeah. the World Cup, the uh, African, African Nations. Nations Cup. She's a sports journalist. Well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> I love the fact you're thinking, what does that mean? Like, well, she's not much of a journalist, Rick. To be honest. Oh. I've read some of her stuff. No, but she's not on air. She does stuff, you know. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. A lot of journalists do. You, you, you want to make it clear that you're not going out with Kate Aidy. That's what you want to make clear, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now. So she she's seen none of the the meteoric rise of Carl as right, a broadcaster. Right, she's been away for the whole time. A since you've sort of become yeah. a wit, yeah. um, a cult figure, oh, to be cool. honest. And he hadn't he hadn't told her this. So uh, <laughs> apparently he went home and she was sitting there looking a bit grumpy. He went, all right, so yeah. She went, should we go out then? He went, she went, I'm not sure I want to go out with an idiot. Right? Oh no. Yeah, because and she went Loch Ness monster. Why don't you just think? Of course, the Loch Ness monster lives in Loch Ness. And she was giving a bit of a hard time. And she went, that's why I don't... He said, that's why I, I didn't tell her. I, you know, I didn't tell her, really. Same thing happened when I was at school and I had to play drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I didn't tell my parents, right? <laughs> but my dad turned up anyway. And what happened? He, um... How old were you, Carl? 
Well, it was it was the school that I used to go to. Oh yeah. Like, oh yeah. So, so oh yeah. You went. Well, you secondary. used to go to the school you used to go to. <laughs> no, but what I mean go is, on. I didn't go to secondary, did I? So I missed a lot of that. Sure. But primary, I liked. Oh. It was okay. all colouring in and stuff. Yep. And um, <laughs> it was a Christmas play, and I managed to get a part in it. And, um, did you audition? No. Um, got a part in it, and I should have been playing the drums to uh, the one about kings. The three, we three kings. Yeah. Yep. I was meant to, meant to be doing that, but little donkey. Came on, and it was one of those. What do you mean came on? That was like next up on on you know the la the the next song. Right, right. And it's one of them songs that you can't help sort of tapping along to. Yeah, do you know like um like if I if I was to go um yeah you'd have to finish it with yeah do you know that they actually send that into space? Do they? And what hoping the aliens will respond with that? Yeah. They do do that because apparently it's it it is one of the things that you can't help. <laughs> what even if you're an alien life form? Yeah, they, they know that, do they? Yeah. But anyway, what can they watch Star Trek or something? No, did it, Knock knock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. <laughs> who's, is it true? Like, if you say no, knock knock into yeah. space, yeah, they have to say. Oggy oggy oggy. Ah, that is that is great. Seriously. No. Oh, hold on, what's something out there? Was it a little green fellow? <laughs> that is great. Yeah, so anyway, that is little, donkey, little Donkey Little Donkey's like one of them tunes that you can't and I was there and he had the drumstick and I thought, oh god. The I, drumstick! I could feel myself and anyway, Just wanting to do it, yeah. I started going along and playing Little Donkey, which I wasn't meant to do. But it went down such a storm. <laughs> What, were there people like parents and that dozing off and then suddenly they heard your version of Little Donkey and they thought, wait a minute, now it's really picking up. What do you mean I'm glad we paid a pound fifty for this. What do you mean it went down such a storm? They're going, hold on, is it, was it like when people Ringo... People in the air. It like when Ringo joined the Beatles and they were going, yeah. boo, Pete Best, but he went... <laughs> yeah, they like, went, whoa! whoa. <laughs> oh, God. No, but the teacher just said, oh, it went down really well, you can do that again tonight. Right. When you're in it again. But anyway, so my dad was there. And, um, and you hadn't told him about this performance, no, so he just did. turned up I off his own back. I never took the light of home and stuff to no. you know, show my mum and dad, because it just put me off. So, um, anyway, he turned up, don't know why, he must have heard from someone else's dad. Yeah. He turned up, and um, he, he swore about me, which... Did I, he? I, I don't... Can you, could you, f could you use you a, a word that's... Is that allowed to be said? The word? Of course it is. Right. If you've if you got a kid in the car or anything, you can turn it down now. Oh, yeah. Right? But he said... Um, it, it was a guy stood next to him with a camera, big video camera filming it, and he said, yeah, film it, but try and avoid getting the twat in the hat in the shot, because I had one of those porters, you know, the little round pork pie hats on. Right. This is so what, sad. What, was this a nativity play? It was about Jesus and stuff. Yeah, well, there was a porter there helping with his bags. Of course there was, I forgot. I yeah. mean, yeah. Mary and well, Joseph, the they stable. got there. Yeah, yeah, because sure. it was the whole, you know, because the, the inn was full. Yes. But I think the porter doubled up with the inn and the stable. Right, that was nice. So he, yeah, he yeah. carry bags over, yeah. Yeah, no, so you, yeah, yeah. You're right, though, I don't know why I was <laughs> wearing one of them. But I was, and, um... And your father said that, and how did you know your father said that? Did you hear it? He told me about it later. Oh, he told you about it later? Yeah, I was talking about stuff I'd done at school, and he said, oh, God, remember that, uh, and he... I spoke to him the other day about it. Right. And, uh... Yeah, oh, God! Shame. So that was that was the end of your sort of drumming career, really, because it could have been. Yeah. I mean, you know, the audience loved it the night before. Yeah. <laughs> you could have like been like, who knows, a whole new world for you. Yeah. Have you done any stuff? I never drummed. I've never drummed. I wish I had. Man. I wish but I had. Uh, that is that is that's uh, a movie story. But is that and that's why you don't and you don't tell you still your mum and dad don't know you on the no, radio, do they? they? Think when they were down the other weekend, they had to come in. And I just said, oh, I'll just go in and press the buttons. Because they could listen on Sky Digital, couldn't they? They could do. But you wouldn't want that, would you? I, I don't want that. No. Play Carl. a record, and I'll talk to you again a little bit about this later. Yep. Right. Princess Superstar, Bad Babysitter, first played on this show by Steve Merchant, by Bad Steve Merchant. That's true enough. By, by Steve Scratch Merchant. That's I right. mean, I, I still like that, but the videos put me off it a little bit, because it's just... It makes it into the novelty record. It always had the potential of being. Do you I know agree. What I, mean? I agree. Although I, I was never a big fan of Baby Bad Babysitter was not uh, my my favourite from the album. Sure. Uh, sure. If people want my interest and in my views on hip hop, then they can always email in Rick, of course. Or, or call you at home. Just give, <laughs> give me a ring at home. There's no problem. <laughs> yeah. Um, or I just pop out and you know, hang with them. In yeah. The hood. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, sure. So, sure. Um, yeah. Now it's time for White Van Man. White Van Man. Um, <clears throat> yes. For those, that, uh, those yeah. that don't buy the Sun, they think it's beneath them. 
Um, <laughs> White Van Man is a column they have, I think, every day, actually, and they just get sort of some, you know, Joe Public to kind of comment sure. on the week's news. just seems to me, uh, you know, that it might be interesting to, uh, to get Carl's views yeah. on some of the big not, events. Not because we, not because we think that Carl hasn't got a valid sort of viewpoint. No. Because Carl sees the world differently to some people, that's all, and that's, that's what's interesting. You know, like an artist does, or a... Exactly, yeah, he's a, very bohemian in his outlook. Yeah. Do you, uh, do you feel that you're up to scratch on this week's news? I don't like this, but... Don't you? Don't, just relax. Why not? Really. It's pressure. No, 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 because you just have to give us your first opinion. For, for your honest answer, that's all we've ever asked of you, Carl, and it's all you've ever given us. Your honest, your first from the heart... Go ...view, on. yeah? All don't right. worry, just relax. No, just chill in. Are you worried that people are listening and thinking you're an idiot? If my girlfriend's listening now, go and have a wash or something. <laughs> go and have a wash. <laughs> Not or very something. nice, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it the opposite of Napoleon and Josephine? <laughs> yeah, go on. Go on. If, if you're going to visit me again, Josephine, for Christ's sake, wash. Well, I'll yeah. ease you in with something fairly easy, um, a music-based question. Um, Kylie Minogue versus Dido as Queen of the Brits. What's your view there? Um, <laughs> go and have a wash. It doesn't really matter, does it? Um, it doesn't really matter. What doesn't really matter? <laughs> With the Brits. I was watching it the other night, and, um, I think Kylie will be a good-looking old woman. <laughs> okay. oh. Do you know, do you ever do oh. that sort of I want to, Steve, I want to celebrate with you. Every time he opens his mouth, it doesn't matter. I want us to open a bottle of champagne. I know what you mean. Do you know um, what I mean? It's yeah. like we did that. Yes. No, do you, do you, do you do that, though? Look at people, and another person who springs to mind, Jenny Powell. I, <laughs> I don't think she's that good-looking now. Who's Jenny Powell? Is she that girl that used to be the, si the assistant on Wheel of Fortune? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think she's a bit over the top for a young woman. But when right. she gets older, I think she'll look... Be a nice. bit of a stunner. Mm. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> so, for you, Kylie... Well, whereas you don't feel that about Dido, is that right? She's all right. She's normal. I prefer Kylie's sister to Kylie. She okay. Looks, you know, she, I can imagine her being a hard work to live with. And Who, Kylie? Not right. being washing up and that. Right, know, sure. Being a bit right, okay. Excellent. Okay. <laughs> And what do you make of uh, taxes rising in the next budget to pay for NHS improvements? Well, my dad went to hospital to have an operation once. Yeah. So I feel like it's worth paying it because I've, yeah. I've got some. Because people, because people might go have to go to hospital. Yeah. Yeah. But it makes a change when it's someone in your family, doesn't it? Yeah. Because you sort of realise. Yeah, a change is as good as a rest. And the weird thing is, if you want for me dad. I wouldn't be here doing this show because when he was in hospital. Well, no, I'll stop you there. <laughs> yeah. To be honest, that, that's <laughs> all you need to know. You, you wouldn't be here, true, but no, but well, no, no, because this was after I was born, so I would be here. <laughs> but but so, for his more direct involvement was what? Yeah, because when when my mum was seeing my dad in yeah. the hospital, I got a bit bored, <laughs> went for a wander, found the hospital radio station, yeah, and got a gig. Really? So in in a, in a real sense, if it wasn't for Carl's dad, Carl wouldn't be. Here. And did your dad, like, while he was listening to you, did he, like, sort of tap the nurse and go, can you get that twat off the air? <laughs> <laughs> Who's put him in that app? Yeah. Oh, uh, okay, um, what do you make of the real-life Mowgli who's surviving in a Transylvanian countryside? Apparently, I don't know much about this story. I don't know. You, what, you know Mowgli, he's the guy from the one? Jungle Book. Yeah. The little kid that grew up um, with bears and animals and stuff. Apparently there's a real-life one in Transylvania. What, what were the things in Gremlins? <laughs> what were the what? The, in Gremlins, they were. Well, wait, 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 wait. Okay, this is an example. This is what your girlfriend said. Think, what were the things in Gremlins called? I can't remember. Just, I mean, it's really. Something like that, isn't it? No, no, wait, 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 wait. Just really, really think now, Carl. Just with all, with everything you've ever, with all the brain power you've ever used, think what the things in Gremlins were called. It's not there. There's a clue here. Oh no. Yeah. They're not. What? Gremlins. Yeah. Play a record, Carl. Oh. <laughs> this is XFM. Well, we're back, and there's a few more people here. It's <laughs> Absolutely, the... well done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well observed. Yeah. Do you want to say hello? Yeah, Hi guys. Right, <laughs> and what are you doing here? Uh, we're, this is uh, Mark and James, or Sko and Belch, and we're here. Sorry, your names are what? Sorry, <laughs> say the last <laughs> bit again. Or what? Sko, Sko and Belch. Sko and Belch? Yeah, that's right. Do you Sko. want to explain that? Um, no. No, <laughs> from the Long drinking story. games, I imagine. Yeah. Oh. We've got worse names than that, but it's radio, so. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> now, you're, you're presumably um, students? Uh, we've, we've just, we've just, gra well, we kind of graduated, when we've been in work for like about a year or two. And what yeah. do you do? Um, I work for a management consultancy. I work for a distribution company up in Birmingham. 
Right, well, okay. Now, you're, what you're doing is a, a scavenger hunt and you're raising for um, uh, a cancer um, charity. Cancer research. Right, yeah. and you've got to do... And this is... We're, we're just helping you out here because... For 17,000 points, you have to get live on a TV or radio show. That's exactly it. So here we are. <laughs> that's why we're here. Yeah. Do, you, have you, do you ever listen to XFM? Uh, I know of it, yeah. I, I listen to it a few times. Sure. What kind of music, what kind of sounds would you normally be into? Uh, oh, I love stuff. cheesy radio, sort of school disco, sort of, you know, 80s right, sure, stuff. Sure, sure. Sorry, what was your name again? Mark, or Sco. Sco, okay. okay. <laughs> and you're? Belch. Belch. Um, and what sort of sounds would you be uh, grooving to, Belch? Uh, cheesy. UK Garage? Che when, uh, well... Craig David. A, 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 bit of, a bit of house, just very occasionally, sure. a bit of cheese. It depends what kind of mood I'm in, you yeah. know. Um, yeah. Now, yeah. You, you don't listen much, but you, you I mean, kiss a celeb, because Carl... Yeah, we actually wanted to do that with you, Ricky, is that mm, right? No. Can that's not, not going to happen okay. with Ricky, but so you know Carl's now got his name mentioned in Heat magazine. Is that right? Well, so that's you, if brilliant. If you want to snog Carl, we'd love to see that. I mean, we don't want to <laughs> snog Carl, but I mean, we were thinking if there was kind of a female presenter here, we might be able to do something, but... Um, what are you saying? A female, <laughs> a female placenta? Well, if you've got one. Have you seen some of the female <laughs> presenters that work on XFM? Oh, presenter. Is that why they're on radio? I thought you said placenta. Um, <laughs> That's uh, unlikely. I know. Um, well, now, what's the other things you've got to do here? So, what, what are some of the things you've done already? Well, See, we, some of these worry me, like start a fire in Pudding Lane. Oh, we've for, done that already. For 4,700 points. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what we have done. We've been on, we've been on Phantom of the Opera stage already. Have you? Managed yeah, we, we just asked the stage door guy. Sure. And, that wasn't um, during the show, I see. No. And that's right, we ought to, we, he, actually, he actually mentioned that yeah, we shouldn't speak about that too. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, he'll <laughs> get sacked. Well, yeah. sacked. But um, yeah, he was really kind to let us on. Um, we've jumped in Trafalgar Square Water with doing a sort of Friends impersonation, so that was right. Yeah, How many points did you get for that? We got 2,000 points for that. We got right. 8,000 points for being on the um, stage at, the, at Phantom of the Opera. Yeah. And we get double that. We get like 18,000 points, which is almost the maximum for being here right now. Really? So that's yeah, absolutely well, great. I, honestly, I wouldn't worry about the little things. I'd go for the big the Yeah, big that's it. We're not, we're, 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 not, we're not interested in the little stuff. We want to go for the big stuff. Yeah. So what are the big ones are uh, get on stage with S Club 7. That's not going to happen, is it? When, when have you got till? Till 6 today? Well, yeah. S Club 7 are on at the London Arena uh, at about 2 o'clock. So. Good luck. But okay. we, I think it's going to be very, very difficult to get on there. But I, I, I know. think so, yeah. Get in the vaults of a bank. Yeah, you some, of these, some of these are bordering on the illegal. That's 20,000 points for that. <laughs> um, like, that. Like get in a cage at London Zoo. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, just 10,000 points, but don't do it. Unless it's a penguin cage. <laughs> well, that's what we were hoping. Just some kind of air, timid animal we might be all right with. You know? Yeah, sure. If anyone's got any good ideas for sort of funky things to do on air, then... Um, okay, well, if you, if, you leave, if you leave your number and anyone calls in, they can help you with anything. Well, maybe, maybe some of S Club 7 yeah. are listening. Or if, 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 it's it's or I mean, we love if, them to bits. If they are, it, it's, it's for charity, and the, the points get awarded into money for colon cancer research. So it'd be absolutely fantastic if we could. Yeah, so Bradley, John... Tina, if you're listening. Yeah, if you're listening. Or any celebrity out there who's a female celebrity, we need to we need to snog them. It doesn't oh, need to be a long snog, yeah, but if we can, that'd be this great. Is, this is good for 7,000 points. This looks like a good one. Um, play the organ in a church. That must be easy. Is that a metaphor? Yeah, but the, you know what church people like. <laughs> it says the bigger the better, so it might be. That's got to be euphemism. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck, guys. Guys, yeah, thank you very standing much. standing outside Le Miz looking Miz. That's going to happen. That's good. <laughs> Man, so, a big gun type thing on the HMS Belfast. That well, we've got a big gun. It's just finding the boat, which is the problem. Oh, thing. calm down. What was your name? Bo? Po? No. Po? Sco. 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 <laughs> thanks guys, very much. Cheers. 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 Bye. Streets, let's push things forward on XFM 104.9, the home of charity. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. I, I've got to slow down because I'm a little, doing a little bit too much for charity. I've got to, I've got to worry about myself sooner or later. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? No, come on. We were halfway through uh, White Van Man. We were indeed, yes. Those, those, um, those lads came in. Getting Carl's views on some of the big stories of the week yeah. from the news. Um, Carl, what do you make of the fact that the British Olympic curling team won a gold medal? I watched it. Uh huh. I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> the only thing that's getting on my nerves now is like, what was that? Is that a trombone player <laughs> just sneaked in? <laughs> that was me moving this microphone. Right. That was incredible, sorry. wasn't it? Yeah. What an right. amazing um, noise. The only thing is. <laughs> that shouldn't sound like that, should it? That's incredible. What a shoddy tin pot station this is. Well, we know that. Sorry, Carl. Go on. It's like in all the papers now, in, in like the, you know, the Star and the Sun all week. They've been like traipsing models over a bit of granite. Do you know, like how those things are made out of granite, the um, the things they throw. Oh yeah. And it just that that bit annoys me. 
Okay. The what, the Daily Star? <laughs> no, the way that, you know, this sport, nobody had ever sort of heard of it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We win a gold mar- medal, yeah. and now in the papers it's like... They've gone crazy, they've gone curling mad. It. Yeah. It's a good game now. Yeah. Good. Okay, next. All right, good. Uh, let me see, let me see, let me see. Mm. Uh, what about the fact that the world's tallest man is living in a semi in Neeston? Uh, it's all right, isn't it? Um, <laughs> something that someone told me in the week is that, do you know all these tall people like this guy? Yeah. Which is a bit weird they've only just found him, considering he's the tallest man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> someone, <laughs> oh, someone genius. told me that, um, <laughs> uh, do you know the guy who was in James Bond, the big bloke? Yes. Jaws. Jaws. He's got the same illness as this bloke. Right. And what it is. It's called it's, tall. It's something about. You're suffering from tall. You've got a, a small tumour or something just behind this part of your head. Yes. Oh, yeah. Just, just sort of in, in the middle of your eyes. Yeah. And, and the pressure on that makes you grow really tall or something. Yeah. So he needs to get it sorted. <laughs> That's your advice to him. Yeah. Get it sorted. Okay, very finally, uh, Carl, this is important. This is um, just projecting <laughs> into the future. <laughs> just projecting into the future now, K-Man. Apparently, global warming will bring sizzling summers and weird wildlife to Great Britain in the future. Are you worried about that? Um, how soon? Soon enough for you to worry. Yeah, it's pretty worrying. Okay. Um... You don't. You wouldn't prefer it to be sunny here all the time. No, because with hot weather comes weird spiders and that. See, I always think we're quite lucky here. Yeah. If you live in Australia, you might have the sun and stuff, but you've got like deadly snakes. Yes. Yeah. Which are deaf. Did you know snakes are deaf? Snakes are deaf. They don't have ears. Okay. Um. So you're all right walking about behind them. Yep. But, but if they see you ahead of you, you're, you're, you're in trouble. But yeah, with with places like Australia. You know, people go, oh, it's great, it's sunny, but they don't talk about the spiders and... They keep the spiders... Sh- lizards yeah. and stuff. So I think we've got a bit of the, both the best worlds. So you're worried, though, about in the future, the vultures flying through the sky, we've got various creepy crawly snakes. Are you yeah. concerned about that? Yeah, well, there's a load... I saw something in the news in the week that a load of sparrows or something was somewhere. Maybe that's the start of it. <laughs> that's an interesting story. <laughs> no. Was that front page, or...? <laughs> <laughs> there's a load of sparrows somewhere. No, <laughs> Read all about it. Sparrows somewhere. Some sparrows somewhere. Sparrows somewhere. Load of sparrows somewhere. Sparrows no. somewhere. <laughs> there you go, anyway. Excellent. That's Thank great. Thank you very that's, much, uh, Carl. That's, uh, that's Carl um, giving his views on the news. Don't do that next week. <laughs> Why not? I just, I just don't like it. Why? Pressure. It's not pressure. You did brilliantly. Yeah. Lost Profits there on XFM 104.9. Now, I like that. Mm-hmm. It rocks. I like the guitar. Atmosphere. It's good. But it's called the fake sound of progress. I know, I know. What? See, what always annoys me is when people, um, they dismiss, you know, say, Enrique Iglesias, current number one. Great song. Good video. Brilliant video. And they say, oh, it's rubbish and all that. But I think that songs with titles like a fake sound of progress. Yeah. Much more something to get on your hobby horse about. What has happened in that Bad video? lyrics by if good artists is always worse than if I think If you're listening, song. or if you work for the record company, or you worked on that video, because he's got the money and the girl, and then Mickey Rourke beats him up, right, he has a fight, you just see him knock him over, and then it cuts, and the next scene, it's night, it's not in the desert, there's loads of, um, uh, police cars, they're not doing anything. They're, they're just standing and around. And somehow he's... Probably got, eating he's, donuts. He's dying of injuries, but I don't know what happened. They don't... What has happened in that video? I, I think c- if you heard the 12-inch mix, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of other uh, sequences that explain why. Yeah, happened. I mean, we all think also we think that he stole the girl off Mickey. I Rourke think he stole the girl off Mickey Rourke, yeah. as well as some money. Some money, yeah. Mi- Mickey's tracked him down. Yeah. And he's thinking, I'm going to stop running. I'm going to face Mickey this time. And he does, and then boom, you're right. It cuts, and suddenly the police have, yeah. have shot him or something. I don't know where they are. Don't know. What, the, the police seem to be leaving him to die in the. See, I thought I thought that they'd called the police because the, the the sort of like the melee. Mm. But Mickey walks off with his gang, the police are going, well, you know, where are they? There's no evidence. And they go, well, look, he's dying. They're going, but how did he die? Yeah. How is he dying? He's, he's not, he's a bit wet for the moment. No, no, in Rourke, though, Rick, I imagine he's, uh, stitched Enrique up. I bet he's framed him or something. Or, or he's, he's, he's no sort of, like, ninja stuff, and there's lots of internal injuries that yeah. aren't immediately Anyone, visible. if you were involved with perhaps the making of that video, or indeed you are, Enrique Iglesias, give yeah. us a ring. If you're around. Come on. Just, just fill us in. I, I need, I, um... 
I'd rather play some adverts now. Than I'd, love, I'd love to play some adverts, Rick, but I'll say <laughs> this. I'd also like to tell the listeners that coming very soon on XFM, some huge news about Carl is. that will rock It'd the capital. It'll be like Pop Idol. It's going to be an ongoing saga. Go in, shot, shot. Good track, good band, but I'll tell you what, in the second hour I just want to play classics. I'd love to be a bloody I want to play player. some Cure, New Order, Smith. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Mm, some, mm, you know, we mm. played Nirvana earlier, but it's not enough for me, Steve. No, you need I your fix. I want, <laughs> I do, well, uh, it's that point in the show now, Song for the Lovers. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of my favourite singers, what, probably one of the most beautiful singer-songwriters of all time. Well, you don't mean that, like, you don't mean that he's a good-looking bloke and you fancy him. <laughs> I mean, I just want to clear that up, Rick, because otherwise... <laughs> that would, yeah. What you uh, mean is that the songs he writes are beautiful. Yeah. You can take or leave him as a bloke, can't Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. And I've got, I've got, and, and he's, he's written, mo he's written such brilliant classics with his lovely arse as... Oh, <laughs> what, why did I say that? Why did you say that, that for, Rick? Because if people will that? listen and misinterpret. Oh, God. Um, uh, he wrote Galveston, he wrote Wichita Line Man, he wrote, um, yeah, he wrote MacArthur Park, and just to tickle him down below, what? what? I don't know Are what, you saying Thieves. <laughs> and this is, uh, a song, one of the most beautiful songs I've ever heard, it's off, um, a few of them, Ten Easy Pieces, which is just him doing the versions, um, of other, you know, that he gave to other people on piano, and this is, um, called If These Old Walls Could Speak, and it is absolutely beautiful, listen to this. These Old Walls Could Speak by Jimmy Webb. Might play another track off that later if we've got time. What, today? Yeah, well, maybe, or maybe next week. We've got, no, we've got lots right. to pack in. We've got things like New Order, Cure. Oh, I'm just that. hoping that um, all those kind of new metal fans, Rick, can just calm down for a second, you know, and, yeah. and, and just enjoy that for what it was. Yeah. Well, like they're not, know, I hope their snobbery is not going to uh, prevent them from enjoying I it. I hope they can just leave it alone for two hours for our show. Because exactly. Because we try and, you know, we get try and pack lots of well, stuff in. Well, whilst you're talking about new metal... Can I just say, Ian Camfield is here tonight, he's what? moving from Fridays. Right, what the hell does he think he's doing? He's what? just offering up information now. No, it's just like you were talking about the new metalers, and now seems like a good time to Carl, say... Carl, listen, you're here for our amusement. Yeah. You don't, you don't sort of come in any time you want. When we decide it's time to sort of have some fun at your expense, then we'll let you know, but yeah. otherwise... This is, and we're not here to help other DJs, or, or, or even this station. We don't give a f about this... See, this is what my girlfriend said. <laughs> What's that? Well, you should listen to her. She, she knows what she's talking about, just, clearly. Now, put your microphone down. She said they just wheel you out when they need you. Switch your microphone off, Carl, and let us finish what we were saying. <laughs> right, just... What yeah. were we saying, Rick? Um, uh, Ian Canfield has got a rock show. Oh, right, yeah. Starting today. It's four hours of pure rock. rock. Yeah, he'd probably hear smoking, drinking Jack Daniels and just, like, having pictures of Vance put up around him <laughs> to get in the mood. Then he'd go out and rock. <laughs> Carl, don't be silly. Turn your microphone on. We're joking. It was, uh, it was, is that right? When's he on? Eight till twelve tonight. Four hours of rock. <laughs> Lovely. Listen, um, some big classics coming up, plus oh, huge no, no, please news some ads. about oh, no, Carl. Please, let's play some more ads. Do you really want some ads? I'm tired of the music and chat. Please play some more ads, Carl. Please. Oh, Carl. Christ's sake. Cure on XFM 104.9. That's what it's all about, Steve. Absolutely. Classics. Yeah, we've got some more classics coming up. Looking forward to them. Now, when we were talking to Carl in the week, the thing we're talking to Carl is that you come up with something that's sort of like, um, quite innocent, and he goes, ah, well, the once, right? And you realise that it's comedy dynamite. Yeah. He doesn't know it, but we want to go save it. And he let out, um, you were filling in a form, weren't you? It's, it's all about your girlfriend thinking you're a div. And it's happened before, isn't it? Because she came home and you'd filled out a form to get a job once, hadn't you? Yeah. What was that for? Granada Telly. And on it... Well, uh, let Carl explain. Yeah. Um, you, you, you see, this is what annoys me with job applications, because rather than just saying, do you want the job, and what can you bring to this business? Yeah. Do you want the job is a good one. Because yeah. the thing is... <laughs> that, 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 that's what I'm listen, for the boys. No, listen, right? Because if they say no, yeah, I don't think they want the job. Yeah, but listen... Go on. I mean, I presume with what you do, you, you have to take people on and stuff. Well, in a fight, you mean? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think it's more important that you're willing to graft and put the hours in, sure. than say that, you know, you've, you did well at school. Yes, sure. Because if I wanted to, I could have done well at school. Of course. I just, I just didn't want to. Yeah. So where's this going? So you had the application form. So when it came to the qualifications bit and that, I couldn't fill them in because I didn't have my qualifications. 
And it was also asking about your languages. And uh, I put down English quite good. English quite good. (laughs) 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 And his girlfriend came over and seen the form that he'd sent off. This was a copy Copy, of it. And so she went, oh, you know what I mean? So that's what started... You know, the disappointment. So they're going to get that and think that you're not English. I don't think I've got it. It was ages ago. <laughs> right. How long ago was it? Oh, well, it was when I was still in Manchester, so f- five years ago. I don't think you've got it, no. <laughs> um, no, th- th- yeah, no, I think you There yeah. could be a long list. I mean, th- th- there's probably a lot of admin problems in that organisation, but they probably... But what, prob- what I meant by it is that, me Engl- you know, I can speak English, but I don't know all these long words that people use all the time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, can I just tell this quickly? Um, it, in the week, um, I'm talking to you now, the listener, um, usually I don't. Yeah. Uh, Carl said, oh, I'm about embarrassing him on air and that, and he's worried about his education, and he was worried about not knowing long words, like we come up with any long words. Mm. And he said, no, I, I was, I was scared, um, you were going to ask me something about, um, someone, and he's, uh, Eastern European leader, his surname is Milosevic, and Carl said, so I learnt it this week, and learnt it so you can't catch me out in case you say, I said, what? And he said... He thought about it and he went, Flobberdam Milosevic. <laughs> <laughs> got the surname right though, didn't it? You so what's his, surname, name? Right? what's his name? That's how Bill and Ben would address this leader. <laughs> how would they have said it? Flobberdam Milosevic. What's his name? S- Slobberdam yeah. Milosevic. Yeah. Well, well done. done. Anyway, Carl, look, you almost let it slip then as you were talking about your uh, filling out that application form. There's some big news that everyone needs to know, which we were stunned by in the week, although the more we sort of talk to you, the more it starts to fall into place. Yeah. But Carl, what's the story? That I haven't got me uh, me exam results from the GCSEs. He never turned up to get his exam results. I was working. And so, how many did you take in the end? Because you weren't even sure about that, were you? You think you took maths and English, don't you? Yeah. And you, you think you've handed in the artwork for art, don't now, you? Now, art was um, continual assessment, wasn't it? Yeah. Coursework. And what was the that you had you made? I made a man s- sort of putting his arms into a car. You've, you've made a model of a man putting his arms into a car. What was this? So that like, one's passed. Was that, this, that, that this is a homage to break-ins in Manchester? <laughs> was this? <laughs> <laughs> was this? <laughs> oh look, he does what he sees. Yeah. Um, so, so you've got that. That's safe. You so, definitely got that one. So you've taken mm-hmm. art, you've taken English and maths. You think? So this is what we're going to do, listeners. We're going to try and find out his exam results for him and tell him next week. Live on air. We're going to call his school, we're going to try and track him down, and we are going to have a little envelope, and we are going to give Carl, at the age of 29, his O-level results. Uh, GCSEs. GCSEs, yeah. Now, Carl, so you took maths, yeah. you think, you took English, you t- do you remember turning up to do those? Do you remember sitting in the room, filling in the forms? Yeah. Okay, and how did you feel you did? <laughs> I didn't, I don't think I did well. You don't think you did well? Did you revise? No. Why didn't you revise? Because I, I don't really believe in it. <laughs> okay. Well, it's just that if you don't know it, then you don't know it. You shouldn't have to start looking at the book. If I went to the doc, if I went to like the hospital, yeah, and the doctor said, "Oh, you need your appendix out," but hang on a minute, I've just got to read up on it. Yeah, that isn't good enough. Okay, he should know, and that's that's the way I feel about it. To be it. fair, though, he did do the revision beforehand. Yeah, they don't usually pass on, uh, like maybe like when they're in practice. Yeah, information they the took line. in by osmosis. Yeah, yeah, and they the bloke comes in and goes, "Can I just see what you did with that?" And he goes, "You've passed." Yeah, phew. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. Good job I watched Casualty. <laughs> <laughs> I just like the way, you know, the things that interest me, I remember. Things okay. like snakes not having ears and stuff. Yes. I didn't have to read about that. No, you just learnt that. Yeah. You saw it on the telly, didn't you? You saw yeah. it on that Ian Wright programme. Yeah. Yeah. And this is what Carl said to me. He said, uh, only, no, it's actually, um, I, I called Carl up in the week and Reese was with him. You know, Reese used to be on XFM yeah. and he yeah. took the phone and he went, Carl's worried after seeing that programme. He said, snakes don't have ears, right? He said, so you can creep up on them and pick them up. And he said, Carl's worried. He said, how would you ever put them down again? Because <laughs> then they know that you're there. I woke up the other night quite late. Worried about that. And I said to my girlfriend, I said, how do you put a snake down? And she said, what are you talking about? I said, that Ian Wright thing, this guy managed to pick up a snake. And do you know that thing where they clamp its head on a jar to get the poison out? <laughs> I do now. Right. <laughs> They did that, but they didn't show you how they got rid of it, and I thought it could really get nasty, because it's obviously annoyed that you've had its head pressed in the jar. Yeah. yeah right? They hate that. Now... It's you, especially as it's in front of their mates. When you lift it off, yeah. right, you've got hold of it. Yeah. If you go to chuck it down, <laughs> it's going to turn on it's you. It's going to go wild, isn't it? So, 
I, I just wondered. Well, what you do is you never put it down, Carl. Yeah, that's why. That's, that's why that bloke has got about you know eleven or twelve just carrying him. Exactly. Yeah, you never put it down. You sling it. Who cares? You just throw it, don't you? Really far. <laughs> that's not that. I don't think you should throw. But snakes. Carl, listen, I don't worry. Don't. You don't, we're not asking you to get involved with snakes. We're just asking you now. You did. You, you've 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 done ma maths. You think? Yeah. Did no revision for that. No. Okay. Uh, English. Do you remember what it was? Did they ask you about Shakespeare? Did they ask you can't about books? I remember, but I must have done it because I thought that was. It was the English enough. language, not English literature, wasn't it? So it was, was like, it spelling and all. So was it? No. Was it? Was it like a comprehension? You read a passage and had to ask questions on it. Was it? Uh, did you have I to write a short essay? A, I don't know. I can't remember any of that. <laughs> okay. I did. A, I did a science. Okay. Did physics it? or chemistry? Physics. All right. Well done. And uh, this is all you think? Any you actually took that? You actually took physics, GCSE, you think? You're obliged to do a language, I think. Did you do French? I did French for a bit. But I don't think you are. I don't think you have to do a language. I think you have a GCSE, I think you've got to. Well, English quite good. <laughs> I think that's his language he did. I can't, so you don't know about I language. History? Remember. Geography? Just, just what you will find out, won't we? Okay. But you just can't remember. You, I, I, I can't believe you can't remember turning up for these things, because it's quite a big moment in people's lives. It is that, the, it is the thing that you've been working to all of your educational life. On the day that the, the things came out, I was working at a print, as a printer. Okay. And it was a really busy day. A lot day. of spelling mistakes that day. It was day, a really busy day, so you're bound to forget. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, but I, I had to use gold ink that day. Oh, and it's, yeah, I mean, you're yeah, not a printer, yeah, yeah. so you don't, you don't know. No, 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 that's the biggie, isn't it? But it's tough, you've got to really get your rollers clean. <laughs> Carl, play a record, mate, and good luck with the exam results. Hopefully we'll have them for you by next week. <laughs> PJ Harvey on XFM 104.9, the home of the classics. Absolutely. Classics. Classics. Classics, classics, classics. Oggy, oggy, oggy. Oi, oi, oi. Um, well, we were uh, <laughs> talking earlier about this, um, uh, there's this book, They Died Young, right? And there's all these theories about these people, uh, like famous people that, um, uh, aren't really dead. And I remember speaking to someone about this, okay? And they said to me, Bruce Lee is not dead, <laughs> right? They said he's not dead, right? Uh, and I thought, I said, well, um, how do you know? I was going, he's going, no, it was a whole big thing by the Hong Kong government, and he's actually working as an undercover cop in Hong Kong. <laughs> I, I, using, I using his, his kung fu powers. Now, no, he's apparently he faked his own death, Carl, yeah. so that he could work undercover for the Hong Kong yeah. police, infiltrating gangs, the triads, that sort of thing. Now, my point is this: if you're going to use someone undercover in Hong Kong, right? You know, an undercover cop. I suggest using the most famous Chinaman of all time. <gasps> that yeah, that would that's be a guarantee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, when he's taking away a gang, they're going, "You look a bit like Bruce Lee." He's going, "No." No, I don't know. See this this moustache? It's a bit wonky. Well, it's, I just just take my word for it. I'm not Bruce Lee, all right? Well, all that stuff you did when you were punching us and kicking us and chop, yes, but Cohen, I'm not. Yeah. It does look a bit like the stuff in my film in in his films. In his films, yeah. But it's it's not. It does it's not. just coincidence. No, yeah. The thing, the thing is, though, and not sounding bad here, not trying to offend anyone, but they do all look the right. Same. They okay. do all look. No, the no, same. no, no. It's, no. I can go on no. You know, we're having a serious chat. I'm right. Not, I'm not, you know, I'm not here to upset anyone. Right. And what I'm saying is, over here... I'm so sorry. No, I'm not... Yeah, but you know me. I'm not I'm not out to upset right. anyone. Right. You're not a racialist? No. What so, do you mean? You, you, are you saying all saying people is, all look alike? Well, look, look at the people over here, right? Yeah. With, like, you've got... No. You've got ginger this... people. <sighs> You've got people with black hair, you've got people who are fat, mm. people who are thin, mm. but they're all so sort of fit, which isn't a bad thing. They all do that sort of thing in the park. They're all fit. It's a place where black hair... I mean, when they come here, they take pictures of people with ginger hair, don't they? Because they don't get them over there. That's what I'm saying. So calm down. <laughs> so you're saying that Bruce Lee... The most famous Chinese movie star of all they time. They can't tell him apart. Other know, other trial it. members would. How are they? I mean, how are they going about their business at all? I yeah. mean, what I'm saying is, how, how would they, they even realise? Yeah, that, that was the, the guy. What do they have to do? Wear numbers in you know because there's 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 a billion. No, but of when, them. You, when you know them, then you know. So them. what? Oh, I see. They can tell each other apart, can they? Well, they got signals. <laughs> I, this is amazing, isn't That's it? How you got away with Simon, it. Simon, which one are you? Just raise your hand, Simon. <laughs> yep. Chang, which one's Chang? Chang, good. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it must be murder, mustn't it? Just that can be the only people thing. going into the wrong houses. 
all the time, <laughs> getting off with their mates' wives. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It must be a nightmare. Though. It must be a nightmare. Um, this, I can't, he, please don't complain. He doesn't know what he's doing. So I'm really sorry to anyone. Uh, he honestly does not know what he's saying. <laughs> XFM 104.9. Yeah, but what I'm saying is... Go on. I don't think I am offending anyone. <laughs> okay. Fine, that's alright then. And you know that I wouldn't want to do that. No, before, I know you don't. Oh, I know. I swore oh, I know. Radio, I said, right, if you've got kids in the car, turn your radio down. <laughs> So before you make any potentially racist remarks, just point out if you are listening and you might be Oriental. Yeah. Please don't take offence. Or go, oh, oh. You know what I mean. So yeah. Go on then. So what, what was this other dead person? Who's <laughs> not? Carl, play a record. Ricky's having a heart attack. We'll come back. XFM. Well, the music of tomorrow is here. <laughs> That's true enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. XF, XF Must be some sort of muck up with a post. <laughs> um, Rick, a lot of the times when I've played uh, Hip Hop Hooray, my uh, Hip Hop track of the week, yeah. you've sort of scoffed, you've thought that maybe I don't have credibility amongst the Hip Hop fraternity. No, it's just the way you dance. Well? It's merely the way you dance that, that worries me. Mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. people can't see it, really. And it's sort of like... Imagine if Mr Bean thought he was in D12. You know what I mean? It's It's that sort of... And I don't diss you. I mean, I, I know you're, you're, you're a hip-hop appreciator. You know, I wouldn't expect man. you to diss me. <laughs> or I'm a black queen. Um, but uh, the point is that I just... Uh, there's a little something that Carl's got on tape for you that I think might change your opinion of my uh, whole hip-hop credibility. Oh, no. Um, now, I've told you in the past... It's not you know, videotape, I, is it? Not at all, not at all. Actually, oh. Carl, just play it, just play it. Yo, one, two, one, two, we are the dilated people. Chilling on Hip Hop Parade. That's right. With Steve Merchant, y'all, XFM 104.9. LA to London, dilated people expanding them. All day. Now, you got that, how about you that? Did that, no, it was just when I was hanging out with my homies. No, did, 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 did they come in in the week? They were in the week, I think, and somebody got them to do it for them. You know, no, that was when I was just I was just hanging in the crib with them. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. I was that's just very, that's and, very uh, nice. Huh? And, the, and the guy just, put, just laid down some beats for me. Yeah, you know, just let down some vocals and, uh, and I gave him match respect for it. You know, and the place was mad deep with girls at the time. I assume you're going to play Dilated Peoples this week then. Well, maybe. Yeah. Let's play it, Carl. That's very good. Merchant, y'all. XFM 104.9. LA to London. Dilated people expanded. Respect, guys. Cheers very much. Out of here. Yeah, yeah, guys, just Max in there, lovely. Good to hear from them. Good to hear from the boys. <laughs> well, probably, I'll probably be heading over to LA NYPD and just, uh, just you know, chilling with them. Sometime. I'd love them to meet you. You're having a laugh. They, I'd I, love them to meet you. We would hang out. I know all the the giant. It's that like a there. thing they do on um, MTV or H. like being dilated peoples, and yeah. they come and they make us three look yeah, like, like a rap people. group. Wouldn't that be great? Listen, I told you before. I've always remembered the words of um, of Snoop Doggy Dog. Yeah, bitch is a bitch and a hoe is a hoe. But if a man be acting like a bitch, he's a bitch ass homie. All yeah, right? those, sure. those are the words from sure. the street. I would. Uh, it's, it'd be like you you two had won a competition or something. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like that. I just don't think you can uh, you can believe it that I'd just be hanging out. You know, with sort of like in the crib. People of courage, and you get a chance to meet your <laughs> favorite. It'd, it'd be amazing, wouldn't it? Listen, we were talking earlier about uh, the fact that um, Bruce Lee, and it's a well-known fact, yeah. he faked his own death so he could continue his um, undercover police work, as it, opposed to being... Because no one was, yeah, he doesn't no look different to anyone else. But I was talking to someone as well recently who, um, utterly convinced, and you get this quite a lot, don't you, especially Americans, that uh, Elvis Presley's still alive. Yeah. And I think, wasn't there some statistic, like, more people believed Elvis was alive than thought, than believed evolution, was that right? Yes. Something like that? No, 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 no. Um... No, it's something worse than that. It's... It could be something... It's it was something, something like that. Something it's something mad, like... I don't it? know. It's something like 42% of Americans yeah. believe that Elvis Presley has faked his own death and is still yeah. alive, right? Yeah. And there's this whole book that's been written about it, because, um, Carl, you might be interested in this. I know you're always fascinated by things that have been written down and therefore a gospel. Yeah. And, um... And that you don't have to revise yourself. You just learn off <laughs> exactly. Ian Wright. Yeah. Yeah. But apparently, um, the reason that Elvis is still alive, um, is that there's a number of sort of pieces of evidence. One is that no, none of his family could agree which colour pyjamas he was wearing when he died. That's yeah. evidence, apparently. Apparently, um, you know he was an honorary member of the FBI. Well, apparently his signature appears on FBI documents well into the 80s, long after he should have died. Um, apparently no one can agree. There were sums of money a lot that of, only... Yeah, a lot of fat people in dungarees have seen him. Yeah. 
there's a number of there's sums of money which apparently only he could have given authority to have transferred to other bank accounts they've moved. Yeah. So this is all evidence that Elvis is still alive. Mm. And um, a lot of people, I was talking to this guy and he was saying, yeah, well, of course, the thing is, he, he, the pressures of fame were too much for him, that he faked his own death so that he, he no longer had to be this, this huge icon, you know, he could live an ordinary life. And my query has always been this, if Elvis faked his own death, do you think he, the, the method he'd have chosen is to have shat himself to death whilst on the toilet? Yeah. Yeah, but because he picked that, nobody will doubt it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Elvis went to the FBI. Yeah. What do you make yeah. of it? Well, exactly. So what we're saying, Carl, is that there was lots of methods open to him. You know what I mean? It's all like, uh, he didn't go to his, his, his secret police and go, oh, I'm afraid I want to fake my own death. I mean, and they yeah. go, yeah, that, that. <laughs> yeah. And what, what what methods have you got? I like to be found, shit myself down the toilet. You like to do what? I want to be a big fat mother. F I'm yeah. the toilet, just shit myself to death. My right, I just on my ankles. No, that, 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 Elvis is a good idea. I'm just wondering if there's maybe something a little bit more glamorous. If you're in favour of death, I mean, you could take a bullet for the president. Huh. What and shit all over him? Just shit no, 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 no crap at all. I mean, what's your no, you just you just take a bullet for him, or you could. There has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be? Has to be shit involved. Why has there got to be crap? I want this way. Make it happen. <laughs> yeah, it's probably the <laughs> car head in hand, look. Yeah. He's worried about the things we say. Yeah. Jeez. We haven't offended 1.2 billion people. Yeah. A, a fifth of the planet. So, Carl, what do you make of it then? Do you, are you convinced like you say, Elvis is still alive? Um, is, am I getting it mixed up with someone else? Because <laughs> all Elvis, no, no, all no. Elvis's look alike. Because... That, now, that is true. A lot of Elvis's do look alike. That's on, safe. On his gravestone, yeah. didn't they get his name wrong? Or is that his brother? Who's his brother? Um, <laughs> Aaron. No, that's his middle name. Yeah. You're not an Elvis um, kind of expert, are you? Hold on, was Elvis was uh, wasn't Elvis a, one of a twin that yeah, died? That died, and I'm sure they got his name wrong on a grave or something. Oh, I don't know. But that's so that's consequently that's proof he's still alive. No, uh, the thing with the uh, still alive thing. Um, like I say, he picked that awkward death because nobody would be saying, hang on a minute, going round upsetting the family, wanting to talk about it because they'd be embarrassed to be saying, you know, we, he was found sort of yeah. in a pile of mess. Weighing 25 stone. Yeah. yeah. So... Because you notice he also expanded to a huge size as well, so he was just a huge fat blob of a man. He also did that to, to add, you know, extra... To the glamour. I, I don't quite understand all this... The... Mowgli. You know, you're talking about Mowgli and you said, oh, what are the gremlins called? Yeah. Were you were thinking of... Oh, Mugwai. Mugwai. Mm. Yeah, but they to were still... Fair, they were, they they were, were called gremlins. gremlins. Yeah. yeah it was, yeah. Well, I know what you're thinking. I know, to be fair. But my girlfriend won't be listening now, so... <laughs> she'll still think I'm... a bit daft. She ne how could, why, why would she ever think that? How long have you been going out with her? About eight years. Well, then, wh why would she ever think you're daft? That's the only stupid thing you've ever said, the, the Mugwai thing. Why would she ever think she's going out with a... To be honest... Mm. A retard. I, I think um, I think it's a very beautiful relationship you must have, you know, because it's odd. I, I mean, she's a professional journalist or whatever. Yeah. You know, and she works for is it uh, Radio Five or something? BBC Sport. BBC TV. Sport. So and you're a man who never even uh, got her a English results. quite good. Her is her is English quite good. Her really good. Yeah. So. And did she do her exams? Yeah, she's quite bright. Sure. So what do you bring to the relationship? <laughs> I, th I think, uh, take the pressure off her. Take the I mean? pressure off her uh, to do what? You know, like, when she's had a stressful day and she comes home and talks to me, I think. Yeah. You would relax me, and that's the truth. I, 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 honestly, but, you know, Carl, you can just, he can just go, wow, it's all right. Do you know what I mean? He doesn't, he don't get stressed. He sits in his little booth now, he doesn't talk to anyone, his little sound booth, all the week. And you, you just... You're in your own little world, aren't you? Well, it's interesting because I wonder sometimes what your aspirations are. I was thinking this, I was watching uh, a repeat of Family Fortunes on uh, Challenge TV oh, last night. And it was sort of mid 80s one. And I don't know if it's still the case, but it was the aspirations of the contestants. Yeah. It was so kind of, it was like, and what's your hobby? Well, you know, um, I like to go out when it's nice weather and oh. stay in well if you, not. if you win two thousand pounds you'd probably be going out when it's nice, couldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and she was like, well, and I, you know, I, I sometimes like to watch TV. You know, and I was thinking, wow, you know, man, you've really got some incredible but what, dreams. But what, 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 what it's I, just like that. I'm, you're just waiting to die, aren't what, you? That's what all I you're... feel sorry for. Right, two things. Um, you know, in like stars in their eyes, and you get a little fellow, and he and he's gutting fish in a some sort of factory in Bolton, and he comes on, and he does, uh, you know, something like Bobby Darren, 
Okay, and he's a, and and Matthew Kelly comes out after because well, I don't think you'll be going back to the fish factory. You will. <laughs> you will be going back. You will. Straight back. Yeah. Hey, mate. Yeah. Let's yeah. think of don't all wind, the stars in the rise, Kelly, because that's a nasty thing to do. I'm Maybe. trying to think, um, trying to think of all the, uh, Stars in the Rise contestants that have gone on to great things. Well, I mean, that little fella that looked like the, the little Alsatian puppy that did Christa Burr. He looked mm. a bit like Christa Burr. He looked like he, li he had problems. Well, I, yeah, now what was it? Is Ian Moore, his name was. Now, he, now, he, he was, uh, Well, like, it's interesting, my friend bought me as an ironic gift for my birthday. He bought me the, uh, live video of Ian Moore. <laughs> Um, you'll be pleased to know that Lady Red was on there, among a number <laughs> of other hits. Um, but it was, it was really, it was called, it had a picture of Ian on the front, it said, Ian Moore, naturally. <laughs> his I didn't know it was too big for him as well. Of course. It was ludicrous. But I don't know if that meant Ian Moore naturally, like we all know who this guy is, it's Ian Moore. Yeah. Or was it Ian Moore, he's no longer being Christa Burr, he's just natural. What did he sound like when he wasn't being Christa Burr? Christa Burr. Did he, <laughs> yeah. really? Because he met him, didn't he? He met... Yeah. Well, Christopher, I think Christopher couldn't wait to get back on the telly. Well, the thing is, I think, I think Ian Moore is actually earning more than Christopher <laughs> now. I think... They could have got Christopher on there. Yeah, you, get, you can get Christopher for a thousand pounds, but Ian Moore's going up for twelve hundred now. <laughs> just a PA to a, you know, a dat. But he does lady anyway, he does all the hits. He does, don't pay the ferry man. Yeah. Don't even set a price. <laughs> does all those. Interestingly, I saw him interviewed once, and uh, Lady in Red's not his favourite song. You're joking. It's bizarre, isn't it? But he was only going to play that if, um, uh, it was the, f uh, fat, uh, ginger, <sighs> Sarah Ferguson. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was only if she was wearing some red. He was only going to play that when? It, yeah, well, it, it was a live thing, and he was only going to play that if she was wearing red or something. Right. Didn't have freckles count. That's beautiful. No, so, it, she had, luckily she had a red, that must have clashed with her a bit. Yeah. A red scarf. On, on her face. And the highlights in your hair that catch the light. Yeah. Such a beautiful lyric. Never right? seen looking so lovely as did uh, The thing is, right, he, he misses a rhyme there. He goes, uh, I'm going to ask you to, uh, dance, looking for a little romance. romance. Now he could have yeah. said dance, <laughs> couldn't yeah. he? I, uh, I've met a man once in a, in a bar I was talking to him for some reason. I, I was annoyed by him. I was wound up by him. And, um, I said that I'd written Lady in Red and uh, I never got any money for it because I found out he was like a music lawyer. And he went, well, give me a call, I'll investigate that. <laughs> and he was actually going to do it for me. I, was I love the idea of that. Just, <laughs> Why did you say that? Really bored, and I didn't like him much, and I was just, and I thought that was, um, that Why might did be you choose change. Lady in Red, though? Because I think I was singing it with a friend of mine, and sure. he came over and went, oh, good voice. And I went, yeah, I wrote this. What it pub is this? <laughs> it, was just, it was North. Is it? Yeah. Never seen looking so lovely as you did tonight. So, yeah, um, anyway, those, that's enough of my Christopher <laughs> anecdotes. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, very much the end of the show. Uh, and uh, it is, it's been a great, it's been a great show. Hang on, have I got time for a song for the lovers, or have I missed that? No. If, if you give it me Chris now. Ralph. Yeah, what are you gonna play? What are you gonna play? What, are you gonna play a song now and then we've got time for it afterwards? No, you'll have to give it me Yeah. Right oh, I better now. dig it out. Well, can, what, can you keep what, yeah, what, what have you chosen? I'll, I'll keep it going. Well, um, a friend of mine who keeps making me little compilations is stuck on an old Tom Waits track, which is uh, from his first album, one that I've not listened to for a while. Brilliant. Listen to it, it's absolutely Brilliant. Brilliant. Can anyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. He's just right. getting out of his bag now because we weren't we weren't prepared for this. We we sort of ran out of time. We're having such a great time with the philosophy of Carl. What do you, what do you fancy doing anyway for, with your future? Me? You know, I'm just I'm just going to tell you now. You know we're still on air, don't you? <laughs> Before it gets too casual, you know we are still broadcasting yeah, yeah. to the capital. Okay. Yeah. What, what do you fancy doing with your future? Well, Steve? once I've made all that money from uh, suing Christa Burr, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, you know, my future. I'm living my future, man. I wanted to have some good mates like yourself and Ricky. Yeah. You know, Carla wanted to be on the radio. We're going to play great we're, songs. We're like the Three Musketeers, me, you, and see. We're, it's like we're like the original Rat Pack. We're, we're like Ocean's Eleven. I'm Sinatra. Yeah. Um. You're you, you're Sammy Davis Jr. And you're what's his name? D Martin, aren't you? Yeah, or Joey Lawrence. What's his name? Joey Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. Joey Bishop. Joey Deacon. Joey Deacon. <laughs> My dad said the ending on the old one's better than the new one. <laughs> <laughs> we should definitely get your dad in, man. That would be just dynamite. <laughs> when people get tired of you, we've got, we've got the whole Pilkington family <laughs> yeah. to The whole on. gene pool. Have you seen it? No. Carl, have we got time for this now, really, what, mate? What <laughs> to be fair. What? Okay, it's track number one. Now, interesting thing about shoddy. Tom Waits is that, um, this is his, from his first album, and he doesn't sound like that kind of gruff, you know, lived-in guy that he wants to be. He, he actually smoke. sounds like something of a crooner. Yeah. But this is a track called Old 55, which bizarrely, I think, might be covered by the, um, the Eagles. But anyway, it's, I think it's a really no lovely track, really beautiful track. I'll see you next week. And we'll see you next time. Say goodbye, Carl. So, yeah. Say sorry. For what? For if you offended anyone. I didn't. <laughs> so if I say sorry, that's saying I'm guilty. <laughs> Xin chào các mọi người và hôm nay bên em về một chiếc Mitsubishi Acha sản xuất 2020 bản 1.2 số sàn xe phiên bản màu trắng Acha là một trong những dòng của Mitsubishi khá là chất lượng tuy nhiên là về vì thương hiệu nó cũng không nổi tiếng cũng như là 
mẫu mã nó cũng kém sang vì vậy là nó cũng cũng rất là rất là kiểu là cũng không nhiều phổ thông lắm tuy nhiên là rất là chất lượng ấy, với giá giá thành rất là phải chăng con này đời rất là cao 2020 tuy nhiên nó cũng bị lỗi đâm đụng và vào đến phần sắt xi rồi bung tư khí rồi vậy là giá một mức giá rất là đẹp thôi tuy nhiên trước khi báo giá thì em sẽ quay tổng thể chiếc xe đã lốp là răng rất là đẹp xe là màu trắng rất là nhìn rất là sang chảnh 1.2 thì các bạn nghĩ là rằng nó ăn rất là ít xăng đấy với tình trạng xăng đắt như này thì 1.2 thì quá là ngon rồi Điện hậu rất là sáng và đẹp Một chiếc xe này một, một hơn 200 triệu thì các bạn nghĩ rằng là rất là hợp lý đúng không? Đây, hơn 200 triệu các bạn mua một xe gì? Đèn này rất là đẹp này. Rất là khỏe khoắn xe thì cũng hơi bị xuất ra một chút nhá, xuất sắc một chút và bây giờ thì em quay phần nội thất cho mọi người xem. Đây bạn thể thấy rằng nội thất thì bộ lăng đã bọc cần số, phanh tay, cơ, DVD tích hợp kem nồi, điều hòa led bút, nói chung là cũng đầy đủ cả camera hành trình và nội thất hàng ghế sau. Đây nội thất hàng ghế sau các bạn có thể thấy da ghế rất là mới. Các bạn có thể là nhìn xem kỹ, em sẽ quay rất là chi tiết thôi Rất là chi tiết Vì đâm vào phần đầu nên nếu các bạn mua các bạn phải đến xem trực tiếp thì Để em soi cho mọi người xem mối gò hàn và cũng lắm sắt xi như nào Đấy Chứ mà cứ nói ở đây thì rất là khó xe cũng khá là đẹp Và chiếc xe này thì em ra bán giá là 250 triệu Cho một chiếc xe Mitsubishi Accha sản xuất 2020 một số sàn Đấy Xe nỗi mới có giá vậy mà nếu mà xe mà đẹp thì chắc chắn là phải trên 300 nữa Xe này nó bị nỗi vậy là chỉ hơn 200 thôi Thế các bạn là mua phải liên hệ sớm với em Còn nếu em ghi phần bình luận đã bán là sẽ không còn nữa Còn nếu mà chưa ghi gì thì là vẫn còn Ai mua thì phải liên hệ sớm nhé Để còn đến xem xe trực tiếp xin chào mọi người I, I think I might have worked out. What, 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 he's, he's, he's walking backwards, it's all filmed backwards, but he's singing forward. Now, the only way I can work out they've done it without CGI in it and cheating with the lips is that he had to learn, learn it, it backwards, it backwards and did it sort of like bit by bit. Did he do that? He was on Zoe's show like about a week ago or oh, something. And so he, he sang it backwards. So he learned phrases and they filmed that. Yeah, yeah. But he didn't learn the whole song, did he? They must have, he couldn't possibly have learned the whole song. He must have like stopped it and. <sighs> I don't know. I it's a great video though. They always do a good video. No, it's very good, very good indeed. So it was, uh, yeah, The Scientist on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello. and Carl Pilkerton. I had a bit of good news this morning. Go Rick. on. Um, I was on the tube coming down and, uh, I don't, uh, I don't want to sound arrogant, I don't want to sound pushy, but, um, I was at Green Park and I'm fairly certain, Rick, it's not 100% corroborated, I'm fairly certain that a woman pinched my arse. So what do you think of that? Yes. There's, th there's a lot of pop, uh, pickpockets around Green Park. No, 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 no. My wallet was still there. Really? But even if it wasn't, you know, that would have been money well spent. But, <laughs> the, but, 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 the, but the wallet was still there. So how, what do you think of them apples? 
Eh? So what did she just pinch her? I don't. Then? I can't confirm it at this stage. Uh, exactly what happened, but it certainly felt like a pinch. I looked round. There By was a woman. There was a woman behind me. Right. She was, was fairly old. She was. I think she's probably in her mid thirties. Right. Um, kind of reddish hair. Right. Uh, I don't know if she's listening. Right. But uh, she knows where I am, and um, so I don't know how to proceed, really, Rick. I don't know if it's worth putting up some posters <laughs> around the Green Park area. Well, what you could just do to try and corroborate well, it. If you saw a woman pinch the lanky you, guy's arse, no, please we get in could, touch. you could probably get in uh, a contact with British Rail and look, go back over their CC exactly thing, CCTV cameras, yeah, and then they could probably zoom in and you know sort of identify and sort of birthmarks or <laughs> exactly. she might have been holding some. Then I could hire a private eye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, money well spent. <laughs> well, so, uh, so there you go. You know, I'm just so, saying. I mean, I'm just saying maybe the you know maybe things are looking up. Things it's getting are towards Christmas. D the worm has turned. Hey? I don't. I, I mean, you know, it's a little uh, sexy story to get the show <laughs> going. It is. It is but, pretty so what sexy. What do you make of that, then, Carl? Really glad you're Carl. quite damning. Um, what's your answer? Well, I mean, you're quite a, quite a tall fella. Sure. So, she must have really wanted to sort of. Reach up and and have a pinch. Mm. Do you know well, what you mean? think she, she was the dwarf? Did with, she, she did it with her teeth. He didn't say she was a dwarf. No, no. But Steve's taller than you know his arse. Yeah, but his arse here. isn't six foot nine, is it? Well, his arse is about three foot off the floor. F four foot. What? Four foot off off the floor. Uh, no, I don't think so. About three. She'd have to be a midget to have to reach up to pinch Steve's arse. He is very tall, but. Yeah. I don't know what That's your point is there, Carl. You're just you're just trying to you're, you know you're just. Uh, yeah, I, I think maybe just a little bit jealous. Just a little bit uh, of jealousy. Well, do you know what happened to me on the way in? Go um, on. Homeless person called me a dickhead. <laughs> How did he know? <laughs> <laughs> do you know him? Is right, that why? He's a local. He's like the local big no well. big issue fella. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he know he knows me. He sees me walking up and down the oh, street. Oh, that's how he knew you. Right. So um, so I normally have a have a bit of a chat with him in that, and I walk past him. And um, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, I can I can be a little bit cheeky with him because I've been cheeky with him in the past with stuff. Um, you pinched his arse. No, no, <laughs> just you know, saying stuff like "God, you're always there." I mean, you got home to go to and uh, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, no, just he, breaking the ice, just breaking the ice. Go no, on. He yeah. knows, and he laughed at that right yeah, last time, yeah, so I thought yeah. I can be a bit cheeky, right? So he goes, uh, he goes, do you, want a, do you want a big issue? I said, nah. He said, come on, I've got loads of them, right? So I I sort of said, oh, w when I was a kid. And I used to do a free paper round the free papers one. I said, just put them in the bin and go home. <laughs> right? And he went, yeah, but how am I going to get any money doing that, you dickhead? <laughs> you see, yeah. I can see his point. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. is homeless and having to sell newspapers to get 50p or a quid or whatever. Yeah, uh, and, and sometimes I treat him, right? And today I didn't have any money. I had a takeaway last night, and I normally give them a quid. And I felt bad not being able to do that because I didn't have any money on me last right, night. Right. I couldn't look him in the eye. Did last you night. explain this to the homeless person the traumas of the takeaway <laughs> without the tip? <laughs> Did you explain that you know y you've had it hard as well? Yeah. I go, look, you don't. I had food delivered to my warm flat. Yeah. It was yeah. A you don't know what that's like. You don't know what the trauma is because you can't have food delivered to your flat because you haven't got one. So please don't look at me like that. You should have said. But most people ignore him. At least I gave him a bit of acknowledgement and sort yeah, of- Yeah, took, took the mick. Yeah. I didn't think I was, I just was being yeah. friendly. Yeah. No, I know. You gotta be careful with the homeless, cause I- this is- I, this is true and this is- I- you know when the clocks went- was it- the clocks went back recently? Yeah. So you got an extra hour in bed? Yeah. And um, I was at cash point with a friend of mine and there was a homeless person sat by the cash point <laughs> and um, was, you know, we would get some money out and she said spare some change and my friend said, oh, he's a bit awkward, he's just trying to make conversation with her. He went, oh, clocks go back. Extra hour in bed. Oh no! I gave her two quid. I felt so bad. <laughs> oh, he didn't God. do it intentionally. He didn't no, realise no. what he'd said. I just know, making just conversation. Bumbling. It's uh, tricky making conversation with the homeless because there's so many areas you ca you've got to avoid. You know, know what was on the telly. Yeah. You know. Although I get recognised by homeless people and they, are, are they I don't know where. Well, you got to remember that's very much your demographic. Right? <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know, Dixon's people who watch TV through the window of Dixon's. Yeah, in Dixon's. Yeah, there was a the big delay as well. Yeah. The well, they, on. they can smell the alcohol on you. They think <laughs> you're one of them. <laughs> oh, I've had to cut down on that. I've all been really good with this training thing. The boxing. I, oh, oh, play a record. And I'll tell you about that. I had my first week of training. I'm, I'm in trouble. I'm struggling. What do you want to play? Oh, we've well, got a bit of. uh have we? Stone Roses, classic. Feeder, come back around. XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington.
all right? Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, st- I had my first week of training for this, um, charity boxing. Um, for those people who don't know, I'm, I'm fighting Grant Bovey, uh, Anthony Turner's husband. Um, it's, it sounds arbitrary, but it's actually because he's, uh, at 41 and about my weight. A bit taller, I think. But, uh, and we've never done it before, but, um, no, it'd be, it'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Battling someone for charity. <laughs> yes. Um, no, but, um, it, 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 it's, and I can't believe my luck, because I've, you know, I've been a fight fan for, like, 30 years, and, um, and they took me shopping, they bought me all the gear, and, uh, the training's great. It's really hard. I mean, it's, uh, I imagine it'd be really hard, and it's probably slightly harder than I imagined. And the only bit I like, so the, 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 I, I, I don't like all the exercise and all the stuff you've got to do. I like the bits that look a bit like something I've seen in a Rocky film. Right, sure, You know, sure. we did that thing with the, uh, the string along the ring and I have to pop up and punch and that. Right. That was great. Right, nice. I, skipping's not bad, I'm trying to get good at that. I like that ball that you go... Yeah, yeah. Are you any good at that? Is that uh, I'm getting, getting good at it. Uh-huh. And, so, oh, and what's well. that teaching you, that particular thing? It's just uh, the rhythm, is it? Uh, it's, it's rhythm and, of course, your arms are up for that long so it... It, you've got to keep your guard up all the time. Yeah. So that teaches you to keep and your you arms were, up. And you were, uh, up at six this morning, you broke some raw eggs into a cup and then you <laughs> ran up the steps of the town hall, didn't you? I know. Well, with loads of people following me and I shouted, Bovey! <laughs> at exactly. the top. No, I'm not going mad, I'm not going mad. Just, sure. just, 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 you know, once every, you know, every other day. Mm-hmm. But I, I'm struggling now. I've, 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 I woke up today and I, it's like I'd been hit by a car. Yeah. Just everything aches, so the muscles you haven't used. But, um, anyway, I had a meeting, uh, the first time with the, with the people, the programme makers, because they're following me for a month and everything, and Grant as well. Um, and they said, oh, um, uh, you'll need a sort of nickname, just for a laugh. And I went, oh, what's Grant using? And they said, oh, I think he's gonna use gorgeous Grant Beauvais or Grant. I went, oh, I don't know, um, oh, gosh, I better go, I better go against that. Um, what about, um, Ricky Gippo Gervais? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, uh, right. uh, like, yeah, so, uh, anyway, I had a frequent with Frank Maloney meeting the next day, and, uh, it's sort of, uh, uh, you know, you've got to do this nickname, and the bloke said, oh, I checked out that name, you can't call yourself Gippo. I went, well, of course I can't, <laughs> I was joking. He went, well, I said, well, it's racist, I was joking, I was making a joke about me, but, and he went, oh, I don't know. And then, uh, I went down to get the, um, buy all the gear from this shop. They'd have the dressing game made? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was picking all the stuff, I was going, oh look, that's like Naz War. Oh look, that's like Ali War in the... And I'm going, I'll have that, I'll have that, picking all the gear and everything. And, um, there was a couple of boxers down there, sort of like looking at me, thinking, who's that fat bloke taking yeah. up boxing at 40? And, uh, I said, oh, I wasn't it? And, uh, the bloke went, oh yeah, how are you doing? I went, oh yeah, so how long have you been in the game? He said, I've been boxing 20 years, so how many fights you had? He said, about 40. And I said, oh yeah, help me, I've got to think of a nickname. And I thought, I said, uh, I thought, uh, Ricky Balboa. Gervais, he went, right, I went, or Ricky Marciano Gervais. He looked at me and went, what about Ricky Martin? <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, dear. Absolutely justified. Yeah, I, I, I'm not respected yet in the boxing world. <laughs> no, sure. But, I mean. It's only a matter of time. Once well, they I see you fight, they're once they go... see you fight, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's gonna change. So, uh, that have you good. actually, have you actually punched anyone yet? Have you actually- Not any, no, no, I've punched, punched prison. I've punched pads and I've punched the, uh, the bag and I've sort of sparred and that. I know, you gonna get a chance to well, punch Well, someone. as I suspected, um, my, my punching power's alright, but my fitness is, I mean, it felt like I was smoking. Yeah. You know, but there's, b- you know, bits of lung that haven't been, had oxygen in them for 20 years. Yeah. And it's ridiculous. And also because, it's not only it's being filmed, but there's the other fighters there that are ridiculous. They're like machines, mm, right? Mm. And it's that thing I go, I can go right. I can I can come out on top, but die in, now of a heart attack, but never give up. Or yeah. I can sit down and go, I'm sorry, I'm I feel yeah. ill. And I chose that one, and of course they took the mitt. Well, of course, and but I mean, you know, soon. Uh, you know, as I said, I haven't got the respect yet of the <laughs> boxing fraternity. <laughs> but and it's how a, long have you got them before? Four uh, weeks. Okay. So yeah. and and do they think that they can turn you around health wise in that time? Uh, n- no, or they're going to be coming out on a Zimmer. No, they're gonna, they're the gonna, fight. you know, they're, they're gonna teach me the ba- basics and see how it goes, you know, right. but I mean, I'm, you know, And I'm each sure. round is four seconds, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, two four second <laughs> yeah, rounds. Yeah, with a, with a yeah. two hour break in between <laughs> each one. <laughs> <laughs> sit down um, meal. So, uh, c- give them a number, I want, I want serious suggestions of my fighting name. Nothing insulting, so what we can actually use. Well, let's give out the, the email, BBC. that's always the easiest. Ricky. Yeah, exactly, Dr. Yeah. at xfm.co.uk. What's the number, Carl? Um, oh eight seven hundred eight hundred one two three four. And it doesn't have to be in the middle. It could be at the beginning, like okay. <laughs> the rage. Okay. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky yeah. the rage. Ricky the tits. <laughs> 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 sure. Ricky the man. Rest, player yeah. record. <laughs>
Yeah, big it was a good day, yeah, Ice Cube. Yeah. Uh, it talks to me about my life. Yeah, in the <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no. A couple of emails are already coming in. Rush, they're flooding in, Rick, yeah. inevitably, uh, as boxing name suggestions for you. This is one from Matt, I think. Uh, he's given a couple, actually. Ricky the Pudding Gervais. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ricky Big Mac Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, th there's a theme here. Ricky Pasty Gervais. <laughs> <laughs> the Pasty. I quite like the Pasty. That's comes great, the isn't pasty. It? <laughs> good, as Carl said, he said, the thing is, if you have a really good nickname, it's embarrassing when you lose, whereas if you just call yourself yourself, it's not so embarrassing when you lose. Carl, this is doing no good for my <laughs> ego. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? If you have, like, Killer Gervais. Yeah, and then you end up, like, vomiting, yeah. choking on your own vomit upside down, down and hanging out the ring. What happens if you win? Do you have to... Whereas, profit. there goes the pasty being stretchered off <laughs> in the first two minutes. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it's not such a problem. Uh, there he is, being lightly basted. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and chuck down a mine. <laughs> what do you mean, what do I have to do? Say if you- say if you beat Grant, say- yeah. Say if that- if that happened. Yeah. yeah right. Um, <laughs> what- what happens next? What do you mean, what happens next? What? Do you think, oh, this is a- a contention fight for no, the no, big no. one? No, 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 but do they- <laughs> they, 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 Yeah. Well, th then we make Ricky too. <laughs> <laughs> No, but, you know, <laughs> do you know if they're planning on making more money? Because it's for comic relief, isn't it? So what happens on the night? No, it's, it's, no, it's for a charity of our Comic choice. relief would make sense. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. whatever, right. Yeah, it was last it? time. I think it was last time. Is it sport was... relief? It's not sport It was relief. last time, oh, right. yeah, but this is, I think this is a programme where the- and, and how do we, sorry, how does this, how do you make money for charity from this? Do we, do we pay to- so sort of for how many punches to the head you're gonna take? Or no, no, I just how think- How long are you gonna last? I assume the BBC donate- money or someone, or a sponsor or whatever, so I don't know, just right. donate, because right. it's actually a program, this is more about a program with a, I think, I see, a, I a see. charity angle. So, uh, yeah. So as if, if you get, like, killed, there's more money and food to go around. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but no, I mean, the thing is, what's the next step? Because if they go like, right, yeah, well done, you've won, thank you very much. Well, Carl, what do you expect? That, that, that it's winner stays on? <laughs> yeah. Like, in a fair, <laughs> where I go out there and I'd let people right, punch me in on the... Right, Manning. Yeah, yeah. And, and, then, and then my twin gets up. Yeah. What, what do, what, it's just a, it's a programme. It's not like, gonna turn it's, pro. It's like faking it. Yeah, but what's the point if it's not gonna go anywhere? Well, look. A what, a sorry, him fighting Grant Bovey in a ring is not entertainment enough. <laughs> yeah, what's the matter with you, Carl? Grant's gonna get his face pummeled in, that's gonna be no, hilarious. But, right, when I did boxing at the youth club. Once, right. when he did boxing, he fought once, he fought a little weak kid, cause it was his first day, battered him, next week it was someone else's turn and he got battered and he left. <laughs> yeah, I said, right, I've had enough. But there was-, there was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. There, there was a ladder there that I had to work, right, and I decided after the sort of the, the first step, I thought, it's not for me this. Mm. Yeah. But, if you win, it's all kind of like, right, well... Yeah, the world's you your oyster. But it's a programme. It's just a one-off programme, isn't it? It's it's like, it is like you got to treat it like faking it. Yeah, but faking it, right, that little gay fella who ended up being a doorman, he's actually doing that as a proper job now or something, he loved it so much. <laughs> Do you seriously think I have any intentions of getting into the fight game and leaving <laughs> entertainment behind? Well, what's the point then? <laughs> <laughs> what what do you mean? What's the point in what's what's the point in watching television? It's entertainment. Or educational. I, I watch it to sort of soak in. Well this is educational. I'm learning a lot. I'm actually learning a lot and it's I can't believe my luck. I've got professionals telling me, you know, hopefully how to lose weight and punch hard. That's just fun. It's like like having golf lessons. Right. But say I mean, here's an example. Go it's, on. A, it's a nice way to plug it. We've got rock busters coming up in about ten minutes or something, right? <laughs> Now, Look forward to that. <laughs> people, yeah. people email in, and they don't just do it for fun, they do it because they know they've got some good prizes lined up. Right. So they're doing it because it gets them something. Yeah, my, my prize is that I've learned something in life. I've gone through an experience, and hopefully I'll come out in some way better if I don't <laughs> get mashed. That's it. That's uh, the prize. That's why we do anything, isn't it? I think this is this is an example of you, Carl. Is that you give up too easily? Yeah, you, know, and you, you took up the box and you, you gave that up straight away. You think there's no point in anything? I did. I did Crusaders for a. I think I, I lasted that out for about four weeks. What's, What's that? Crusaders? Well, it was my mate, right? He uh, <laughs> it was it, it was religious. Uh huh. And I, I'm not really. Um, but no, I mean you believe in ghosts though and shadows pushing people off bikes. But go on. But it's the same time. I think I told you once before that I went to the church with this lad because right. I swore and he said he was going to tell me dad. Yeah. Effing <laughs> and Jeffin. So he said if you come. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> is that how they get people to church nowadays? I, l- I love that what kid that yeah he hasn't got got uh, got the idea of the protection game. <laughs> There's nothing in it for him. Either you turn to religion or I tell your father. <laughs> right. So uh, so I went to church with him and that, and then the next week he said, I know that was rubbish and you didn't enjoy it. It's when I got kicked out for messing with the tennis ball in the pews. Right. I don't think we've heard that, but I don't think we could possibly <laughs> right. go into that now. Summed it up. Yeah. So. Uh, <laughs> Well, no. No, we, come on. That's we'll it. come back that's, to that. That's, you okay. had a tennis ball once in pubes. No. <laughs> no, in the pubes. 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 In the pubes. pubes right. yeah. But anyway, so <laughs> I, I went there and I said, I don't think much of this church thing. It's a bit boring. <laughs> um, Sorry. And so you went to church and you ended up in the Crusades. <laughs> No, the it's, crusa- called, it's called crusade? the cru- Crusaders. What it is, it's meant to be the fun part of religion for kids. Uh-huh. Right? right. And my mate said, oh, you want to come along? It's, uh, you know, you go on a Friday night yeah. and, uh, do it on a Sunday as well. Brilliant. Right. So I went on the Friday night, it was brilliant. They had Sabutio, <laughs> uh, played table tennis in this dead big old house. And what do they do right. at the end? Say, oh, I hope you enjoy yourself. Remember God <laughs> gave you yeah. all this. Well, yeah. it's sort of, you know, enjoy the simple things in life. You don't need computer games. You can play, uh, table tennis and that, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. talk with your friends. Yeah. And blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, that's all right. I think you'd be happy in a Young Offenders Institute. (laughs) 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 You get to clean the toilets there. But don't forget, Carl, I think God invented Nintendo too. (laughs) Right. Well, anyway, so that was all right. I loved it on the Friday. Yeah. And my mate said if you go for four weeks, four like weeks in a row without missing a day. Yeah. Uh, you get a free badge, you know. And like, salvation. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't like <laughs> yeah. all this sort of being stuck in stuff. Do you know right. what I mean? That's yeah. what I mean. I yeah, don't get tied down. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, every day. Yeah. Right. So, um, anyway, so, so you've got to come again on Sunday, so I thought, well, we'll have another game of table tennis, it'll be all right. Yeah. So anyway, I go on the Sunday. <laughs> who so, was this? Who was this servant of God? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I go on the Sunday. It's like a totally different club. There's no table tennis. <laughs> That's how they trick you. No sabutio. Yeah. They start handing out Bibles. Oh. And it's I like s- a timeshare like, thing. Hang on a minute, right? <laughs> they trick you. So, so I didn't go again on Sundays. I used to just go on the Friday. Just go on the Friday. Brilliant. And Brilliant. Yeah. I'm amazed no one else saw through that. <laughs> 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 well, the thing is, there used to be loads there on the Friday, so they, were. they won't even notice if that yeah. I'm not like, yeah, do you sure. know what I mean? <laughs> that I'm not showing up on a Sunday. So anyway, uh, carried on. It was just this kid in the vicar. Oh, I love that. You you got one over on the church. So yeah. I, I was loving it, right? Playing table tennis and that. Yeah, and no then uh, on a Sunday, phew, they found out where I live, and the head fella started coming round, knocking on the door. God. <laughs> The, the He's f- everywhere, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he knock? The fella who- Politeness. <laughs> the fella who, like, ran the club, he started coming around knocking on the door. And I saw him coming up the path and I said to my mum, oh, it's the fella from the Crusaders. Yeah. She didn't even know what I was- No. In. She, she, she was thought like, you were off you nicking hubcaps and stealing cars. She yeah, didn't yeah. have a clue what I was it's talking about. You've been going to church! You've been going to church! I don't you believe it! little bleeder! That's not how we brought you up! <laughs> so, uh, I said, look, just tell him I'm, I'm not in. Tell him I'm not in. And she had to keep doing this and they were coming round every Sunday to try and make me, like, Go, yeah. go on a Sunday, it was yeah. really important that I went and that yeah. I was abusing the system and all this. Anyway, I didn't go, um, and then- Why didn't they just tell you on the next time we turned up on a Friday? <laughs> yeah. No, well, I, I d- because there was so many people there on a Friday, you just get mixed in in the crowd. Yeah. Right? It was jammed, it was well popular on a Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Right? But anyway, on one of the Sundays, um, it was- it was quiet for a bit, and, um, they stopped coming round. So I thought, right, I can go out again, right, on a Sunday, because I used to avoid hanging around the house in case- What to, sort yeah. of reign of terror is <laughs> this? is incredible. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, so I thought, right. It's like the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> yeah. So I thought, great, they forgot about me. Yeah. Uh, everything, I can carry on in sort of normal life now. Yeah. And I was playing out in the avenue, fella comes round. Oh. And he goes, there you are, you, oh, you, you know, you're always busy on a Sunday. Uh, you enjoy Fridays and that, don't you? I was like, yeah, yeah. He goes, well, come on, you've got to come with me. And I couldn't get out of it. No. You know what I mean, uh, it's like, what could I say? Charlie says. Right? Yeah. So, um, anyway, he nearly killed me in a car crash. <laughs> so that was the excuse I used next time. He had a Mini, right? And right. he was driving us there, and he hit the curb, nearly sort of turned over the Mini. Oh. Right? It was like three of us in the back. So, I said- <laughs> That record? So, next time- or was he it came, a joke? Next time he came round to pick us up, I said, look, really enjoyed it and that. I said, but ever since that journey, I really, you know, I don't, I don't want to get in the car with you again, because- it scared me a bit. I right. said, all right then. I didn't have to go again. That's all right, isn't it? That's extraordinary. Yeah. He almost killed you in a car crash. That's a parable. Thank, thank God no one was hurt. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I remember that-, that Your th- life moves in incredible ways. Yeah. Rather like God. Yeah. So, uh, so they're, pro- they're probably round there now, aren't they? Going, is he coming tomorrow? Is co- <laughs> <laughs> what we got? Well, 
are we talking about the prizes next? Well, let's talk about the prizes. We've got the, yeah, we've got the big game Rock Busters coming your way soon, Rick. I know you're excited about that. And uh, is there more educating Ricky this week? Have you got that planned? There is. We are struggling on that feature a bit now because I feel like we, we've covered a lot of topics. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Well, I know about hairy Chinese kids yeah. and deaf people that hit their head and can hear again. <laughs> so I don't think there's lots more to learn <laughs> in life. <laughs> and the amazing Carl Pilkington. Right. Prizes. Yes. Them. Rock busters. Yeah. It's, uh, one of the big exciting quiz shows and this may be one of your last chances to play. There's rumours that it's gonna get ditched, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> rumours there that Carl Wilkinson, the creator and mastermind behind it, has always <laughs> grown tired of it. <laughs> it's often the way. You heard them earlier on, the very best of the Stone Roses from that. We've sure, played, uh, sure. I Wanna Be Adored. That's one of the prizes. That's a nice little, uh, Christmas compilation. Second hand now then, really, isn't it? Second hand, yeah. yeah. Fifty years of the greatest hit singles. I'll tell you there's some great stuff on here. Oh, Opens, Rick, with, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. One of the, not, one of the big, biggest, uh, number ones of all time. If you've not heard that enough already, you're followed then by, uh, John Lennon's Imagine. Candle in the Wind, Elton John. You've got, uh, all, all on sorts one of CD, Stephen. Well, it's, uh, these are some of the next greatest thing, uh, they, rock minds. They've chosen some of the best songs by some of the best artists. Go on. Uh, Paul McCartney's Mull of Kintyre. <laughs> <laughs> That's on there. Uh, we've got, uh, let me see. Culture that is pretty impressive though, because they are real big classic number ones as opposed to, you know, the, 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 the song by the artist they didn't really care about. You see those things on, uh, this is not available in the shops and it's, you know, the second best song artists have done. It seems odd that we're giving it away on XFM because it includes, uh, Robbie Williams' Angels. Yeah. Uh, Atomic Kitten's Hole Again. Spice sure. Girls' Wannabe. Connie Minogue's, uh, Can't Get You Out of the Head. And I think it closes, well it almost closes with Steps Tragedy. That's the penultimate track. It ends though. Uh, any ideas? Yeah. It's a big, big hit single. But Did they know it's Christmas Band Aid? Perfect for your uh, Christmas sure, party. Sure, sure, that. sure. Uh, we've sure. also got the uh, Groove Armada current album. Is that yeah, from there? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And signed by the man himself, the Big Beach Boutique uh, DVD, Fat Boy Slim's uh, concert on that Brighton Beach. And uh, there's all kinds of treats on there. Uh, and includes a, um, an audio commentary <laughs> by, Nor by Norman Cook. I don't know how that works. Three <laughs> hours of him going, this is where the needle almost jumps. Yeah, Watch out for this. I did a little bit of scratching. I'm not very good at scratching, That's but just look uh, forward to that. I'm putting a, putting a different track. You'll see me there. Yeah. There's the crowd loving it. Here's me. I'm just waiting. This is where I, I put, I go <laughs> from, uh, I go from Conga Squad to Basement Jacks. Yeah. Look forward to that. Oh, this one of my own. I'll pop on what you see there. I've got, I've got Praise You Ready on <laughs> Yeah, I just got, got that. That's slightly dusty. I've just had to wipe that down with a damp rag. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> Plus, uh, I suppose this is good if you're a fan. This is a uh, box set of the first series of Linda Green. I think a new series starts this week or has already started. I'll yeah. tell you what I found while I was clearing up, Rick, because I know there's not a big movie this week. We normally give away a big movie. Oh. I was moving house this week and yeah. I found a video that you're more than welcome to if you're a fan. But it um, no, it stars Kurt Russell. Executive decision. <laughs> <laughs> I've got that to give away if you're interested. Uh, Executive decision with Steven Seagal in a uh, cameo as well. So, uh, <laughs> oh, great. I think it's I think it's on TV this week, Rick. So if you <laughs> miss it this coming Channel Friday, five? you don't tape it this Friday. Well, here it is on video. Bring Vietnam. it in because I think Carl's excited about that. I think Carl would like to win that. There's wouldn't you? Great prizes well, there. How about if you come up with an extra Rockbusters today? For the, for like the bonus prize. I don't think I'm the man for the job, Carl. I think it has to come from your unique yeah. take on the world. Carl, you don't, I don't think you've quite worked out why you're funny <laughs> and why things you do are good. Go on then. Right, you ready then? So, uh, just in case, uh, you haven't heard it before, I give you some initials of a band or an artist. We're not doing rock busters now, are we? Yeah, I thought, well, we'll just- Oh, then we, we keep that going, then we got, well, I, I love educating Ricky, that's my favourite thing now. Well, what, what do you want to do, Steve? I mean, oh, I it's, just, it's just, let's do the clues. It's yeah, just like you've, it, it's, it's sort of bigged up the prizes. And, and so this be... is only by email. Give the email address out now for people to write it down now, Carl. Right, it's ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. Ricky.gervais right. at xfm.co.uk. Only entries on email. Yeah. You're gonna get three clues, you've gotta get them all right. And you win all the You stuff. win all those prizes you said. Okay, Carl, go on then. Right, and just a quick example, uh, the f one of the first ones we did, it was like AK and the clue was Exploding Pet. Yeah. And it was Atomic, atomic Kitten, kitten. Right? right? So you understand how it works now. These right. are your clues. The first one, <laughs> um, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> the, that army has got some well nice trenches. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and the initials there are <coughs> DW. Do you okay. write some of the questions for 15 to 1? <laughs> <laughs> Go on. So that army has got, got some a similar well phrasing. Nice trenches. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, the second one. Um, what were the initials there, Carl, on that person? DW. DW. Yeah. Right. Uh, the second one. The top of them curtains are all wrecked. All the materials all worn. <laughs> 
he acts it out, though. Clue. We've got to get him on telly. We have got to get him on telly, because his little face and his, so that's, his gestures that's and- That's the second on. one, the initials being H.V., okay? The top of those curtains are wrecked. All the material's all worn out, right? H.V. <laughs> and, the, <laughs> and the final one, um, here's the final clue. Um, I was in Texas the other week, right? I tripped and landed on my knees in a puddle. <laughs> what's the, what's uh, the initials? That? WH for that one. So I was in Texas, I tripped up, landed on my knees in a puddle. So that's WH. Incredible. <laughs> He's got it! It's a great- It's fantastic! It doesn't work! Okay, right. time to join the record, time to join the record. you're playing for, uh, these, okay. uh, compilation albums. We've got the Fatboy Slim DVD, Linda Green oh. on VHS. And of course, uh, <laughs> Executive Decision, starring Kurt Russell as well. <laughs> oh, God! Bob Dylan. Just like a woman on XFM 104.9. Couple more names, uh, boxing nicknames for you, Rick. I Go think this is from Josh. Uh, Ricky Blue Eyes, I quite like. Uh, and uh, he's also put Toad Rage. <laughs> which, uh, which I quite like. Uh, I'll tell you, our number one fan has emailed again. I'm pleased to uh, announce Who? Richard Anderson, Dickie Anderson. He was in touch Anders last week. Anders is back. Anders oh, he is back. loves this show. He's such a fan of the show. And this week he's emailed in what actually is the point of your show? Is it to confuse, irritate, depress, or what? All of those things, Dickie. Thanks for uh, noticing. Oh, he loves this show. <laughs> he's such a fan. He's such a fan. He's he's because last week you remember, Carl. He emailed in to say that he'd rather spend his time counting his feet than listen to this show. Presumably, he's done that. Yeah. And he's just emailed many? in. Well, how many feet? Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, but he's, he loves this he's show. A good, yeah. So uh, thanks, uh, Ra. Thanks for listening. See you later. Missy <laughs> Elliot. Work it on XFM 104.9. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Educating Ricky? Yeah. Should I do a bit of that? Well, they're, 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 the clues are coming in f uh, furious. The yeah. answers, I should yeah. say. Yeah. 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 So go on in. Oh, this is what. Yeah, uh, Rockbusters is well underway, Carl. Don't worry. You've done yeah. your work there. Okay. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just going to tease us, aren't you, with three uh, headlines? If and I'm going to choose one, and then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's the way it works. And at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with <laughs> with with knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at last, he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go um, on. So the three headlines for you to pick from. We've got um, first one. Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. Uh, yeah, well, go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, <laughs> third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me right, here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. <laughs> Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them and they're hanging around and stuff and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... <laughs> when? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Olden times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. We, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books, well, it just popped down when it was. Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time. It just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, all right, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and he'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's all right. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made, you know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now, so there wasn't as many houses, right? right? So what you, what you ended up getting is like, uh, you know, the rich people having a nice place to live. Oh. And the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like, uh, people would go around to the mate's house and say, look, I haven't got anywhere to live, it's a bit cold, can you let me stay, right? Mm -hmm. So they'd go, uh, oh, all right, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for, like, weeks. Yeah. Right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner, and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner, like, a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat, and, uh, nice veg, 
Yeah. Gravy and This happened know. every time, did it? <laughs> it <worked. laughs> this is where the saying came this from. This is what happened, Rick. This, this is, is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> 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 the book of vague sayings <laughs> and stuff. Yeah. Right, so, uh, so yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, but yeah. a person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some, like, sort of a cut-off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh, meaning. Right. <laughs> okay, that's, that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute. <laughs> Carl, no, why no, does no. that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get with a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so he They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. Hold on, are you giving me the cold shoulder? Yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like- I like to do it cryptically. <laughs> that way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. Well, yeah, that- that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of meat, we'll leave that. Well, we'll-, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh, bacon <laughs> in the morning! Oh, bacon in the morning if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others. We'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, Brilliant. Uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice, looking forward okay. to that. Okay. <laughs> Nirvana, yeah. in their version of The Man Who Sold the World, of David Bowie tune. Yeah. Good. Good tune. Good tune. Taken good from that uh, new Nirvana compilation. I like that version, I like the David Bowie version. You can't decide, can you, Rick? You're torn. In fact, I like the Lulu version as well. Is there a Lulu version? Maybe we should play that one, wow. Rick. Yeah. Was this recorded, what, in the 70s? I think she recorded it about the same time right. as David Bowie. I, I, don't, I don't know if he released it as a single. I think it was just on a... Yeah, so, uh, off the album. Interesting. Carl, Carl, Carl is studying. Okay, what's the next yeah. one? What's the Educating well, Ricky? I don't know, uh... See, like I say, I was lo looking around and this stuff that is interesting, right? I was looking on the web... But there's no point. Well, it's just that I found one about, um, What's the point? About a lad who, uh, eight years old, yeah. but he's still breastfed. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if you can get anything out of that. <laughs> Is that what his mum said? <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you mean I don't know if I can get anything out of that? You don't need to. No, it's, it's just that, you know. Where did you read that? That was on the internet. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Um. You're always unspe unspecific when you mention it. It's just it was on the internet. Well, yeah. I'm trying to think what I put in. I think I put in Y to see if I'd confuse the computer. <laughs> <laughs> Go! You are. No, I did, I did, it, no I, honestly. I did a search, put in why, and I ca he came <laughs> up with funny things that, like, why d is this person doing that? Why is that? And it had a picture of this eight year old lad, sort of, you know, <laughs> on his mum's nipple. And, um, it was saying, you know, <laughs> is, is, is this healthy? <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. You sure that wasn't asking you that question? <laughs> Uh, what, you, but I put in why to confuse the computer. Computer. Like the computer. the computer going, what do you mean? Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. Oh, look, but, yeah. Uh, Last week, uh, I was walking, um, uh, home with him, and I went, uh, I got a, he was saying something stupid, and I went, I've got a competition for next week. Let's do a phone in, and it's called Carl Pilkington, genius or fool. Yeah. Right? And he went, no. No. I went, why not? He went, well, uh, it'd be confusing because they say, there's no difference between genius and being a fool. <laughs> <laughs> you do though, don't you? No, that's, no, no, that? but it's rubbish and people say there's a fine line between madness and genius and, uh. you know, it's a ridiculous soundbite. Uh, they don't say there's a fine line between a genius <laughs> and an idiot. Well, the people who do are idiots. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what, what would you do there though, just to sort of wrap that little thing up, what would you do? That lad loves his mum's his mum's milk. What are you ta- what are you asking me to come up with? <laughs> no, I'm just- A title for the- the story- No, 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 it's what? just- it's just what would you do? Right? What do you mean what would I do? Well, it's causing a bit of a problem in the area, right? <laughs> what area? In- in America, I think it was. Oh, America a problem, are they? George Bush is worried about this kid well, who's no, breastfeeding right, the eight. Imagine it like this, right? Right. But, so, Carl, what are you asking me? About this spurious story you saw on the internet? I saw on the internet, there's yeah. an eight-year-old lad, he likes his mum's milk, yeah. And it's saying, is this right? Should it? No, be it's not. On? But what? What? What, what <laughs> do you want Ricky to do about it? It's not his responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, but but the little town that he lives in, they're all yeah. causing an uproar, right? <laughs> Going, this isn't right. You know, no. I can't let my kid play out in case he's in the garden with his mum getting a bit hungry. 
right? Yeah. So, oh God. what should they do? Because his mum's saying, well, he likes it. Yeah. And he, you know, what, so what do you do? I don't know the laws. No, but I'm not asking you to sort out the laws. I'm just saying, if you lived in that neighbourhood, what yeah. would you say? If you went up to him and said, look, everyone's getting a bit fed up with this, look. I'd say, what, 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 what would I do? What do you mean, what would I do? <laughs> what, what are you asking me? <laughs> I, right, it doesn't matter. No, 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 what are you asking me? What are you asking me and Steve and no, the I'm public? I'm just saying, say if you live next door to this woman. Yeah. Right? The kid's hungry, eight years old. He's out playing on his bike and he goes, Mom, I'm getting a bit peckish. And he goes, All right, son. She whops one out. <laughs> um, and he starts having his having his milk, right? <laughs> you, live, you live next door, you're putting your washing out and you see this going on. <laughs> you're getting a bit sick of it because it's gone on for months. <laughs> Eight so, years, I see. Why is it your business? Just why are you me... why are you such a nosy neighbour that you're concerned? What would you do, Carl? Let's turn it back on him. Yeah. What would you do? What's your solution? What would you do? Well, I thought I'd say, right, why are you doing this? And she'd say, um, because he likes it. And I go, all right then, put it in a bowl first. <laughs> <laughs> so and you think that would sort that out? No, because I, I was thinking about the whole thing, right, and you do that when you're a baby and everything's all right, innit? Yeah. yeah. No one bats an eyelid at sure. a little baby having, having a bit of milk from its mum's right. breast, right? Yeah. You'd almost say it was natural. But you grow out of it. <laughs> it's like, you don't see, it got me thinking about things you don't see, and you don't see- <laughs> Did you put this into a computer? Show me things you don't see. What else no. don't you see? Well, you don't see, like, an old man having a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> you never- <laughs> Oh! So what- oh, <laughs> You know, the, you know the terrible thing about all this, Steve, is he's right. You don't see it all. No, man I know twigs. that's a but, terrible but, thing. So what they have got, right, they've made old man toffees, haven't they? They've come up with rovers. <laughs> is, is that a song? Oh, oh, God. You don't see it <laughs> No. No, listen, no. So they've got their worthers, right? Yeah. So, <laughs> You Forget think he's giving a lecture it. at Oxford? It's, it's not coming anywhere. No, go know? on, sorry. Go on. I'm what? just saying. Right. You grow out of things. Yeah. And the old man, I'm sure when he was a kid, he'd have a twit. <laughs> yeah. And now it doesn't look right, so he's having. <laughs> it doesn't look right! So. Right. I don't think Werther's originals were specially designed for old people. I think they were sweets that just happened to have been made for years. Mm. That's why old people eat them. Yeah. They didn't go, hang on, there's a market here. I've <laughs> noticed old people aren't eating Twixes. Quick, let's make some yeah. old man sweets. But the, the, the little yeah. advert, he gives it to his grandson as well, doesn't he? He goes, I have a Werther's original. Oh, I so think it, it cuts though before he throws it back in his face and gets, <laughs> get, get me a Twix. <laughs> <laughs> and a damn curly whirly. Pilkington. So, other things you don't see, Carl? Got any other ones? Or you've obviously been thinking about this. Um. What confuses you? When you look out your window, what confuses you with the world? What, what do you walk around going, oh, that's a bit weird? I remember, um, when you were in, uh, Edinburgh, you were confused because you saw someone putting a parking ticket on some rubbish, <laughs> which confused yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. That, that was weird. Yeah. Um, the world's a crazy place, isn't sure. it? I mean, whatever you look at, you can- <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like what? Like what? Oh, well, anything. I mean, you could look out the window there and you'll see something you go, why are they, why are they doing that? Yeah. What are they doing that for? Yeah. Uh, I'll tell you this, uh, this, maybe we should bring back White Van Carl. There's some interesting questions this week, Rick. Yeah. We could, we could pull that out of the bag if you want to. Shall we do that? Just to uh, get uh, Carl's take on uh, the world's. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'll tell you what, we'll do that in a second. Let's have another educating Ricky because well, I think you got sidetracked with your, your, your talk of. Well, just the other thing on things you don't see. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. Mm. Now, you don't never see them. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw them anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too <laughs> obvious. Uh, <laughs> webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest. So. Oh yeah, and the and the the lady with the head like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's yeah, not go yeah, through these again. It just raises that. too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> bluffing. Um, and. Just bluffing. But it's, it's Who was a, the king then? I don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. 
Right, what happens is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't cleaning properly. Mm. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because there's, like, I don't know, don't know why they're running out of space. But <laughs> okay. they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should have just buried them, but, <laughs> there's probably more land back then than now. <laughs> he doesn't need anyone else in the room <laughs> to have, to have a, a dialogue. With himself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I'm sorted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's going to be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's that. There you go. You've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because it was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this to be the word bon, meaning good? No, no, no. I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So yeah. you've got all these people who are like going around. And like, oh, you know, so and so died the other day, and you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yes. So you can imagine, like, just constant, like, being depressed. Mm. So and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh God, what are we <laughs> going to do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said, let's let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, uh, what we need to do is uh, have a big party. Mm, so mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yep. in a big pile, mm -hmm. and they're all diseased and that, so yep. they, set, they set fire to the bodies, mm -hmm. yep. and, they, and they said, let's uh, have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by, and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have a drink and that, and have a chat, we'll have this big fire going, and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So bone it was, fire. it was, it was all the bones, bomb fire, it's, it's bone fire. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah? yeah, that's interesting. So that's that's how it came about. Yeah, in the 1700s. Yeah, that was. No, nah, probably. Okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably I, earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm, mm, I reckon mm. it came from. But uh, interesting stuff. Interesting. Yeah, so stuff. That, that's. Yeah. Uh, Did you celebrate bonfire night? Is that a big celebration for you? Nah, Do you like the fireworks? So I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. Even no. as a kid, you know, you have to go to like sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults think the kids love it yeah. and, they're, and, they're, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go no. Yeah, not, absolutely. Let's not go yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had <laughs> wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon as a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, <laughs> I'd pay to see. That's a fire <laughs> display I'd like to see. As <laughs> it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. Is that that's your excellent. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. Let's <laughs> play the record. Oh God! <laughs> oh, right, what's this? Go on. What, tell them, go on, go on, just get on with it, because I just can't believe what you just said. What, what, what are we doing? Are we, uh, the final one? Yeah. Right, the last one, like I said. No, no, no. Say, say the record. Yeah. Say the record you played, they, go on. This is, uh, Free Association. Yeah, brilliant, I right. I wish I would not. Yeah, and what did you just say to me just before this was ending? He just looked, he just looked over at me and went, are there any animals without a brain? No, but hang on a minute. No, 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 right, right. And I went, yeah, there's animals that are, he went, oh, I was gonna talk about this, but it's sad. There's a lad born without a brain, and he laughs a lot, and his hearing and his sight's okay. I'll go, well, that's impossible. You, you if, if he's without a brain, all that is impossible. And he went, well, it was in the <laughs> magazine. <laughs> no, it was in a book that somebody sent. Right. And I didn't want to bring it up, because it is a bit sad, really. That this, you know, young lad, there's a picture of him sat there with his mum, and, uh, what? uh Carl! Well, Carl! And, uh, it. It, it's impossible. Well, there must have been more to the story. He Carl. can't not have a brain. Hearing and sight is a concept within the brain. That's all yeah, it is, right? Yeah. The ears are yeah. just receptacles. They're just yeah. So, but, but that's why it was in this book. It was a book of mysteries. Carl, you know if you if you if you <laughs> Carl, if you're reading a book and you see a photo and you guess <laughs> at what you think the story might be, that doesn't make it true. That no, doesn't make I, it fair. I, I looked at it because I thought he looks like an happy lad. Sure. And, and I read about it and I thought that's weird. Like you've said, the fact that he hasn't got a brain but he can see and he can hear. No! 
Impossible. Uh, uh, I impossible. <laughs> okay. Go well, on. Well, I, I don't know who to believe. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, uh, we haven't done it for a while. White Van Man. I thought yeah, there's some interesting questions back. raised today, and yeah. I think it might be nice to well, just call them about Carl. I think direction. we set Carl up again in the last hour as a person that people want to know yeah, his know opinions on the world. Know, yeah. yeah, well, uh, yeah. if you're not familiar with it, uh, on Saturdays, the Sun newspaper um, asks a typical white van driver questions uh, his opinions on the week's news, mm. and uh, we thought we'd throw these in the direction of Carl. Um, yeah. Good. And then what do you make, uh, what do you make of, uh, this teenage thug, Carl, Mickey Carroll, who spent four months in jail and he's won 9.7 million on the, uh, lottery? Is that justice? When you think of all the good people that are going hungry? And there's a lad there and he's won Did he buy the ticket before 7. he went in? Uh, no, I think he bought it once he'd come out. So he's, he's done his time. He's done his time. Fair enough then, he's, he's been punished. Yeah. Right? He's bought a ticket. He's had a lot of bad luck. Mm-hmm. Now he's having a bit of good luck. Quite right, him. next one. Are next you concerned that now he's got all that money he could turn into like a sort of mastermind villain? You know, like a James Bond style villain? He's Ooh. got a criminal streak, we know that. Is that a concern for you? Well, I mean, we imagine don't. that he could build we, some kind of underwater fortress. We don't, with, with, with my lawyer's hat on, we don't know that. Yeah, well. <laughs> right, right, well, he'd have to prove that he didn't have a criminal streak. <laughs> I'd say, have you been in jail for four months? Yeah. yeah but sometimes so, people are bad because they haven't got any money, so he might be just an angel of gold now. Or yeah, whatever yeah. Thing is. Um, yeah. one in five children aged between 11 and 16 go on booze binge sessions at least once a week. That's terrifying news, isn't it? Kids, they, they know, they know too much now. Yeah. yeah. Um, you despair. To you, yeah. You despair. <laughs> yeah. Know, right? yeah. Listen to this one, right? Go on. Me, me dad had me, uh, niece in the car, right, running her to school one day. And, uh, she was in the back of the car with a mate, and they were chatting away about stuff like kids do. Um, and they got onto the topic of one of the mates who they said, uh, I mean, you've got to remember, niece, this point was probably about f five or six, something mm. like that, right? Mm. In the back of the car, talking about My Little Pony, whatever it is they play with. Uh, subject changed. Um, oh, that Lisa in, uh, in our class, she's a lesbian, isn't she? Right. <laughs> that was the to that's what they were talking about. Yeah. Chatting yeah. away about it. <laughs> Just openly talking about yeah. lesbianism. And probably, you know, <laughs> this is the topic that they're talking about in the pub when they're having one. <laughs> Out drinking. Yeah. Yeah, but they might have thought a lesbian was a, 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 you know, a, a funny word or something. You don't, you don't necessarily know the, the ins and outs of it, do they? He's, he's weird though, isn't it? Because when I was, when I was younger at school, you didn't like, I mean, you swore a little bit, but it wasn't like major swear words. And you sort of did a little bit of nicking, but nothing like they get up to now. I mean, if... My, my, um, girlfriend, when she was about seven or eight, she was walking to school with her mum, and she called her a C-U-N. Right. You are joking. No, she said, oh, you're, cause she thought it was a big, she said she thought it was a big furry animal. She said, so she was being nice, <laughs> and I remember, like, where'd you do that? Where'd you do that? Like, <laughs> just heard it at school. So they might, you know, they might not know what it means. Well, I tell you, you know, um, I have to, I'm gonna have to use kind of euphemisms here to tell right. this story, but when I was at school, I learned, you know the stronger version, it's not the same word, but it's very similar with one letter change. I'm gonna use twit. Yeah. You know the word I'm thinking of. Yeah. But I, I'm gonna use the word twit to replace it, right? And I said, I went round- Do you think that's what? Yeah. All that's, right. That's what I'm thinking of. And, um, so can I say it? Am I allowed to say it? No, no it's, 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 not, it's not, weird it. though, because- no, hang on, Some people look from Cornwall use that, like, saying twit, so- if people well, listen in Cornwall, do you know what, think, a twit think, is a pregnant goldfish. Well, well, uh, I I learned the uh, I learned the stronger version of twit. Yeah, um, twat. twat. <laughs> 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 For those that aren't sure, <laughs> um, I, I learned this at school when I was like ten or whatever, and I didn't know what it meant. I thought it was just a stronger version of twit. Yeah, I thought it was just if you were really annoyed with someone because they were yeah. a real twit. Because uh, I is worse than I. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Apparently, so you know, <laughs> Carl would be a that. twit. And, yeah. um, and so I started using this at home, because I didn't realise what it meant. I started using this at home, oh, you twit, you're a twit, and saying it to my dad, you're a twit, you're, you know, but yeah. I'm not saying twit. Yeah. And my dad didn't know what it meant either. <laughs> That's great! Well, I couldn't believe. So he started using it as well, right? So uh, then we'd be driving in the car, he'd be saying to my mum, you stupid twit. Yeah. And he'd say to my mum, you, 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 pull over, pull over, you're you gonna bum it, you twit. And saying this, then I learned at school from Mark Johnson what it really meant. Yeah. Stopped using it, obviously finding out it was quite an offensive word. Yeah. Couldn't, I didn't want to bring it up to my dad. I didn't want to sit my dad down and say, dad, you know that word we've been saying? Yeah. You know what it means? So now, to this day, I never brought it up with him. So we'll be driving. You know, he'll be, I go in for Christmas, we'll be driving around, he'll be calling my mum that word. <laughs> Left, right and centre. I think she knows. I think she's just embarrassed. Or she's just upset and she knows what I mean. She goes, why does he keep calling me this terrible <laughs> word? 
But he's the only one, I think, in our family who doesn't know what it means. No one's oh. got the guts to say, I don't know whether I should tell him this oh, Christmas. Oh, what a twat. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Good to hear that again. Always good to hear that. Suede. Animal nitrate. Carl was all flustered because there isn't a, a, a record set up and he's getting all tizzy. He's been more worried about his competitions than sorting out putting records on ready. Uh, what? I'm, I'm after so Steve's song for a lover. Well, I'll tell you what, you, uh, why don't you carry on with your, uh, educating Ricky section? I'll have a look on the, uh, on the we we'll keep it going, Steve. Yeah, Cover. you keep Go it going. Go on then, right, okay. We've right. had, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Ricky, educating Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, though. Go on then. But we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just do educating Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week and I had much better things, like when I tell you about Brian Blessed climbing Everest and for some reason it made him, uh, it, uh played havoc with his belly and- What? He, he followed through and he had to clean up. Shut himself. Yeah, using, um, using ice and stuff. Why are you tell- why are you telling me that Brian Blessed- what, what- in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he- he- he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I'd give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he- he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, it played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's- he's, he's you know- Oh, good. so he's alright. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match for no reason is rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself yeah, he did that. Is, is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, but what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah, good. Been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've probably uh, cleared well. it up by now. Right, but, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's it slip on it. I can't really bother got... telling you this one, cause- Come on! Be just honest, do it, or do it now! Steve, how are we doing? Look, no, no, never mind that. Look, just tell me what that means. Uh, oh, he's a nuisance. Oh, this is so annoying, Carl. I'm gonna go mental. Right, Talk. Right, right, listen, I'm just putting right. this in here, right? Right, nuisance is a bit of a nuisance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. the old fella who used to hang people. Is that 1800s? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He used to be able to tell somebody's weight just by looking at them. Right? Um, that's a bit of a bonus fact. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be the judge of that. The, th the, thing, that, the thing that I wanted to tell you yeah. is, um, money for old rope, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even be bothered. Yes, you're gonna tell me now. Come on, Carl. Well, I mean it. Basically, money for old rope yeah. came from the, t right. What was all that about? He can tell someone's weight. <laughs> what was the that bonus for? fact. And blind blessed shitting himself. What are you, what? No, don't you, no, tell me. That now, you nearly made me swear then. Just, I'm getting really annoyed. <laughs> I'm getting really annoyed now. Tell me this back, Carl, or I'm gonna go mental. <laughs> Come on, Carl, time's running out. Not that people, years ago, when people used to be hung, right? Right. If you didn't like the person who's been hung, you'd go, God, I really don't like him. And, to, and so you never forget the <laughs> time. Because if they're being hung, we take that as red. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. But, so they never forget afterwards to get the hangman to get the rope and to cut it up into little pieces and he'd sell them. He'd sell the little pieces of rope to people. And See, that, so, Carl, that's the most interesting thing, if it's true, that you've come up with. Right. Okay. And so what's, what's, you, so they, they sell the rope? They sell the rope and it's money for old rope. Money for old rope. Meaning, like, you know, God, it's easy to make money, that, that all they have to do is cut it up and sell it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm cynical. <laughs> I'm not so convinced right, listen, though. We're, we're really tight, we haven't even got time for a last track, we've got an ad break and we've got to give out- Okay, questions. give the answers then, this is right. ridiculous. So, Come Steve, on. do you want to pick a winner? Uh, I've got oh. a winner when you give us the answers. Okay, so the first clue was, uh, that army has got some well nice trenches. Yeah. That was DW. Who's that? Dandy Warhols. <laughs> It's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> right. That's good, yeah. Uh, the second okay. one. The top of them curtains are wrecked. All yeah. the material is worn. Yeah. HV. That's, yeah. uh, Holly Valance. Oh, he got a phone call for a woman saying that I haven't heard it. And she went, she was, he was talking to her off air. And she went, uh, what is it? Uh, so and so, so them curtains. She went, all oh, right. He said, you know the thing around the top of the, um, curtain is a palmet, not a valance. And he went, cut her off. Yeah, but. <laughs> My aunt is always making balances on everything. I'll tell you about that next week. Right? <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Right. Is this the one that farted for five minutes? Yeah, yeah, the very same. <laughs> yeah. Right? So, we'll talk about that. Uh, I was in Texas, I tripped up, I landed on my knees in a puddle, WH. Yeah. 
uh, Wet Knee Houston. Right? Wet Knee Houston. Yeah. So, You're a maniac. So, who's a winner? We've got Pete, Catherine and Laura in Newcastle upon Tyne. They're listening uh, online, I assume, and, uh, they're going to get those great places. And remember, they've got loads of stuff. They've got, uh, the DVD here, they've got Linda Green, they've got Stone Roses, they've got another compilation, and Executive Decision. What did you read about Brian Blessed? Is it actually true, or have you uh, libeled no, someone it, it was an interview with him, innit? And what did he say? Oh, Come on, what did he say? He said, I, I climbed Everest and the, I played off it with me belly. Uh, let's talk about it next week. We've <laughs> really run out now. Oh, you're a fool.